only up to 82 yesterday with Zabu Dex, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the Zabu Hawk deck because it's been my favorite. We're gonna see if we can end. do a little climb in today. <laughs> Zabu Thanos was a complete and unmitigated disaster. Was not a fan. Are there any real players in this game or only bots? Um, you largely only play bots up until a certain point. You start getting mostly real players past 30 and then past 40 you basically get all real players Sands when there's not someone to give you right away. Hey, Don Dum, glad you're having fun with it. Crossbone. So, probably. Probably, what's it called out of them two? A uh, Zabu deck? Everyone's progress on the rank ladder should go to zero every season reset. Nah, I think that completely defeats the purpose. <laughs> they want, they explicitly want people to be able to make slow progress up the rank ladder. They want it, they want it to be a, a gradual thing that players work up to. All right, I think we Spooderman here. Well, actually, do we Spider-Man here? Because <clears throat> I don't want them to play here next turn. The Hawk with Mystique with the Widow's Bite and the Face Down is awkward. So I can, if I want to Hawk Mystique, I have to play for these two locations, right? <clears throat> do I Chavez here rather than... I can only play one card here, but they can play two cards here. My Hawk is gonna be 15, so I have to count on 30 winning here. Chavez could win the Dark Dimension. Oh, that's a good thought. <clears throat> yeah, maybe we do that actually. We play for all three. I like, I like that. Let's Chavez, let's Chavez the left. <laughs> so, 15. <clears throat> These are going to make Bishop bigger. So I can definitely win the middle. The question is, where is the Mysterio at? I'll stay in for one cube, because if the real Mysterio... There's a good chance the real Mysterio is in the middle, right? Or the left? If the real Mysterio is right, we're going to lose the right here. <laughs> Only one more cube though, so I think we chill. Please be metal, real Mysterio, please be metal. Sec. Alright. <clears throat> yeah, I think I think they I think it was unlikely that the real Mysterio was on the right. Because I think they felt safe here being able to Shang-Chi my monster. It's like the TLDR. Hey, Zaire, thank you for the seven months. Welcome back.
I really despise the idea. As someone, <clears throat> a idea that's got to be some kind of Reddit shitter thing that's been propagated. As someone who spent a lot of time building lots of decks with limited collections that people sent me to play with here on stream, Leader and that card being popular did more to limit the decks that I could build with other people's collection than any other point in Marvel Snap. There is a reason why Leader being popular meant that I stopped taking viewer deck submissions. Leader doesn't help you keep up as someone with more limited cards. Leader and its existence makes it so a lot of the things you could be playing to keep up with aren't playable because they just get fucking hosed by leader. <laughs> the idea that leader helps you as a player with less cards is so silly and strange to me. That has not been remotely reflective of my experience with, uh, <laughs> with anything. Maze and Blue, thank you for the brand new Prime, appreciate that. Serious! Excellent leader take, love the Marvel Snap content, thank you for the nine months. Ooh, okay, well, my hawk is still pretty large. Because we did get a rock and a black widow off, so this is this is gonna be eleven, which probably means we win. Especially because <coughs> Cosmo means they can't shang or enchantress me here in the middle. How many times do you have to split to get gold? Your fifth split is your first chance to get gold. Hey Zen, thank you for the brand new tier one. Appreciate that. Yes, your first chance. I've watched quite a bit of your deck submissions and you often win by small margins a lot of the time, something that leader preys on very well. Completely agree. <clears throat> Gotta hope that 13 is enough to win the left. Punished. I mean, I'm just supposed to assume they're gonna play hard for the left. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. L O L. <laughs> we both. I was like, wait. I thought I had a Ted Power Mystique. What happened? Uh. Uh. <laughs> we, uh, we take those. Double Spider-Man is a lot of fun, Tim. The minds, the minds worked out in our favor. <laughs> I could see rescue being fine, but I also couldn't dream of cutting Spider-Man. I think if I was interested in trimming uh, or fitting rescue under their stat stick in, Crystal's probably the one that's got to go. I've liked Crystal overall, though. Crystal adds consistency and helps us get to Darkhawk better. Hey, Toaster. Thank you for the brand new Prime. Appreciate the support. With Zabu out, would you recommend getting Darkhawk or Absorbing Man from the token shop? I mean, they're both they're both good choices. Punished for the snap that I did. That being said, Moon Girl uh, into Double Spooter Man might get us out of this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Born a dip. Okay, so hard hand size limit of seven. So I want to, and our hand copies from left to right. So I think we want to play crystal out here. So that way we get copies of rock slide and Spider-Man. I want to set up uh, double Spider-Man next turn. And I can't, I obviously can't crystal in the middle. Actually, do I crystal to, no, I don't really want to give them a free crystal, right? Mm. Is that worthwhile? Maybe it is worth giving them a free crystal. So now we tee up Spider-Man here and Spider-Man here, who says they can't play cards at these locations next turn. And the important thing that Spider-Man does in the middle here, especially, is he locks out our opponent from being able to Enchantress Typhoid Mary. So they can't get rid of her downside, which is nice. So we Crystal to win the center, and then we add 12 over here on the left and hope that's enough. And 12 should hopefully be enough, considering Typhoid is going to shrink whatever they play here by a little bit. Think there's any chance draws are fixed after there's a snap? No. <laughs> the, game, the game is not rigged once you step. Want a lamentous game with our dark clock deck? That's a good good way to start the day. Hey, Rad Friends, thank you for the brand new Prime. I opened Leader last night. Can you ask Ben to delete him for my collection, please? How about everyone's collection? Every time I snap, my opponent snaps back and wins eight cubes. Well, you can't help it if you snap and they snap back. You can, however, help it if you snap and uh, they snap back and then you stay in when you're likely to lose. Do I buy all the variants in my shop every time? No. Buy buying out the variant shop every day costs what? Like over $100 a day? I buy out credits in the shop every day. I spend, I spend like 20 bucks a day on snap to max, max my account progress. Only, I only buy variants from the shop if there's a variant I really like. Do we have any internal intel on why it was delayed? Yeah, they said they found an issue with it. And they didn't want to release with an issue. Yeah, what? Buying, buying every variant every single day is like... What? That's like four grand a month or something silly? So, Lizard on the Eternity range is a really interesting choice, right? So like, it means they're gonna win the Eternity range, but winning the Eternity range also means that, uh, like the Lizard's more likely to become smaller, right? I think I want a new hand tier. I think three randoms are better than Spider-Man Korg Mystique. Changes. 
Oh, they have Enchantress for the Lizard. That's, that's actually a good thought. Because they could have Enchantress for the Lizard, I shouldn't play Zabu there. Although it is nice to note that at least now my Zabu is... Uh, it is nice to note that my... Uh, my Sorry, my Dark Hawk is safe from... Enchantress... Be a retreat angle. Five cards. I think the odds of them killing, beating Hawk here, and beating us in the Eternity range are pretty high. Blue bounce. Escaped. Yeah, to the person that suggests we cut Chavez, Chavez adds consistency to finding our cards we want to have early, earlier. Helps you curve out. So... This deck is a good ex example of an exception to the rule I typically talk about when it comes to copying Mystique. One, you can technically Mystique Zabu. But two, both Crystal and Chavez are cards that help us see the Darkhawk more consistently. Got double Spooter Man set up here. Snap. Ah, snap too late. Hey, really, I actually think that that should be considered a bug. And I think, I think that once you've locked in, once the turn is already going, it shouldn't allow me to snap while the animations are playing. I think that's a really awkward feature. Um, actually, let's let's go Psylocke into Rock Slide. I think I'm absorbing Manning Spider-Man next turn, but I want to leave myself the flexibility to absorbing Man uh, Rock Slide just in case. Yes, it counts as a next turn snap, which is very clearly not what I wanted, so it shouldn't allow me to make a decision like that, right? Like, I get that I snap too late, but it should just, like, make it not snap. Yep, and this is exactly the case with losing Dark Hawk in the middle. I definitely want to just double Spider-Man here. Okay, good check. Double, double Spider-Man is not... Double Spider-Man is not uh, good for farming extra cubes. It is good for uh, getting your two cubes, though. <clears throat> the bots drive me crazy when they have perfect answers. Well, I don't know if it makes you feel better or worse, but the bots that uh, actually cheat don't happen until you're high-ranked, so... If you're, if you're consistently losing to bots in the rank 30 to 40 range, and that's not to say you shouldn't ever retreat, but if you're losing cubes to bots in the lower ranks, it's really a sign that you need to learn how to retreat better. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, 
double Spider-Man turn five feels bad in what's considered higher ranks. Bots at like 70 and 80 plus start cheating. And by cheating, I mean they start making plays knowing the outcomes of everything that's going to happen. How do you know you're playing bots? There's a few different ways that I all break down here in this video. Um, when it comes to the double Spider-Man on five, I feel like a lot of the this feels bad to lose to comes to the fact that just like it kind of feels bad to lose in general. But I think things like that that deterministically lets you know you're locked out of a game in Snap are pretty largely fine based on how the cube system works. It's very different than something that completely jukes you on the sixth turn. Spider-Man worth playing without Absorbing Man. Um, I don't know that Zabu is worth playing without Absorbing Man, if I'm being honest. Here's a question. What do you do with a card when you're leveling splits? Do you leave it at the base version with an infinite border or do you leave it at the new background and keep the border as you're leveling? Yeah, I always I always use the old one. I like the infinite border. Yeah, Absorbing Man, copy Mystique after she copies Darkhawk. It cannot. Mystique, Mystique loses her on reveal. Quinty, thank you for the brand new Prime, appreciate that. I don't think Zero is good with Zabu. There really isn't a good place. If you're trying to play Zero with Zabu, the only turn you can fit a Zero in post Zabu is turn five. And at that point, I don't think you really need the effect, if that makes sense. These hawks aren't that big. I think I play hawk here for the sake of not giving them a free Professor X slain. Yeah, it looks like I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the Winterverse variants keep opening until they patch. So there's only gonna be eight card, four cards in their deck next turn. So these Mystiques are each eight, which is still like a pretty reasonable stat line. Uh, we have information on upcoming cosmetic bundles. We do not have information on another bundle featuring... We do not have information on another bundle featuring... Uh, featuring collector's tokens. Any decks to play Nolan outside of Galactus? Uh, it's okay with Deadpool, but the Deadpool archetype in general is just not very good. Too many Cosmos and, uh... Too many Cosmos and armors in the format. Victor and Emrakul. How does Mystique Absorbing Man work with cards that are rogued enchantments? Well, Absorbing Man doesn't have anything to do with ongoing, so not at all. Mystique, if the card, if you play an ongoing out and your opponent has priority when you go to Mystique it and that your card loses its ongoing, your rogue won't copy anything. Is there a limit to how much gold you have? Uh, what's the spending limit on your credit cards? So, 
the thing to note about Crystal is that Crystal isn't good when my hand is good. But Crystal is reasonable and good when my hand is underwhelming. So, a good example for a bunch is Crystal is not great in the games that you're you're already going to be favored in, which is fine because you're already favored in those games, I think. And we got collection diff tier. Even if we had drawn Darkhawk. Well, I guess if we drew Darkhawk, we would have won because our deck is bigger. But they drew they drew their payoff and we didn't. It is unfortunate. I don't think I don't think it's likely that we win here. Oh, is this Colson? Oh, it was Colson, you're right. That's cute. That's an interesting their build is very interesting. That was that was our Jesus, not collection dift. Yeah, I don't I don't think we win on average a lot of the time here, right? Can I stay for four cubes? We're already committed for four. I wish I had played Crystal last turn now. Big spew. Big spew. We lose, even if I would have played Crystal out, yeah. Yeah, it's very possible I should have Crystal on four instead of the second Observing Man. I agree with that. Okay. Take your cube. Escaped. That's pretty good. Crazy to think Zabu is too strong. You're a crazy typical card gamer if you think we know the answer to the question is Zabu too strong already. Big, big typical gamer energy. Uh, I retreated because of the current metagame Duck Doolittle. It wasn't that my hand was bad. I retreated because my opponent's turn one snap is likely indicative of something fairly strong. And my hand was was decidedly not fairly strong. All right, so we're open to draw Spider-Man here. Psylocke. Psylocke's actually kind of interesting. 
So she lets me go Hawk into Mystique next turn, which I think is great to have as a surprise. They're kind of in trouble if they Spider-Man me. Just double Dino, okay. Yeah, now and now they have priority, right? So I get to do I get to do this, and these are huge. This is an instance where I can stab on the last turn. Might be wrong though. Might chase them out. No, people people who are complaining about Zabu are largely people that have only watched YouTube highlights showcasing it when it's at its best possible strength. They're, wa they're watching the games where Zabu plus Sarah lets people play a bunch of cards. This is bad against arrows, sure. I don't know. I don't know that I'm expecting arrow out of a deck that's played Zabu, Quinjet, Devil Dinosaur. But they also had leader, so all right. I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting another non four cost card here. It felt, it felt like they had kind of like, it felt like they had kind of, uh, it, it felt like they had kind of played out their threshold of, they had played out their quota of non fours. I, my expectation, after playing with Zabu the last two days and against it, my gut instinct is that long-term Zabu is probably less powerful than Silver Surfer. It's probably still playable, and I like this particular deck a lot, but it's not a big numbers, individually impressive card, right? It's like, this cute enabler that you build around that lets you do neat and cheeky things. Hot word, thank you for the prime. And Rembowski, thanks to re upping for the second month. Welcome back. That second month is one of the most important ones. It means you hung out here for an entire 30 days. We're like, yeah, I want more of this. How's this as compared to the field of the other Hawkeye? Zabu put Dark Hawk into overdrive. Hawk was a card I liked a lot. Uh, before Zabu released, it is just incredible post-release. Absolutely love it. People keep talking about power creep. Like, what? Ev every time something is playable, doesn't mean there's fucking power creep chat. There should be new playable cards. Also, I think it's really fucking funny to hear someone say my video was a defense of Zabu. My video was literally a, it's been out for a fucking day. We don't know if it's too good or not. It was a take half a fucking second and play some goddamn games or something before complaining about it being busted or power crept. Like, people, people are just fucking wild. Oh, we're gonna lose our Dark Hawk, aren't we? And when I go fish for a cube here, I should probably leave. Have you considered new thing bad? Yup. All right, good jam. Victory. And again, when you hear me talk about things like Zabu, 
a couple of days into it, you'll hear me use a lot of quantifiers like anecdotally and in my experience. I acknowledge the fact that my experience might not be reflective of everything the data says around the card. Because again, the answer is we certainly don't know yet. Maybe at this point, after several days, on second dinner's back end, they have enough data to draw a conclusion one way or another about something. But we don't we don't know that. That's not information that's public. Anybody anybody working outside of second dinner certainly doesn't have enough information to make a data-driven decision on whether or not Zabu is good, bad, or otherwise. There are two things card players hate. The way things are and when things change. to a lot of things, Tom. I think it's I think it's also important to acknowledge that like just because a counter exists doesn't mean things are automatically okay, but it also just like complicates the narrative of this is too good, bad, or otherwise. I think I'm snapping here at this point. We get to go Hawk into Mystique, copy my Hawk into Black Widow, and then we finish up with Chavez on the last turn. If the real Mysterio is right, we could get into some trouble. We lose, we're losing right if the real Mysterio is right. Cause they have a total of 14 there. I think the patch delay means they won't be downgrading cards soon. I have no idea chat. Other new cards are incredible. Sure, but like, so pointing to Darkhawk and saying new cards are power creep is ignoring the fact that most of the new card releases have been like aggressively mediocre, right? Like go, go look at the list of new card releases that have happened in Marvel Snap for series five. Almost all of them are niche or bad. Darkhawk is perhaps the most general of among them. And it's only okay in like this one archetype. Oh man, well played about it. Oh, we were dead regardless. Pretty fortunate for our opponent that they got Machine World when they're playing Ronin as well, but. We would have won this location if they hadn't put a bunch of free extra cards in our hand. Like just to, to take to take a second here and like look at Look at the actual information. Let's look, let's look at just series five cards to start because these are the most due ones, right? Okay. Bast, probably the most flexible among these cards. Sentry, narrow kind of bad. Null, very narrow, powerful with exactly Galactus. Galactus, powerful but incredibly telegraphed and easy to mitigate loss against. Scroll, card that is a narrow tech card that you don't build your deck around. Thanos, really novel card that's not powerful at all. Valkyrie, neat card to kind of build around and decent answer card, not overtly powerful. Shuri, 
similar to Bass, kind of powerful. Like, there's like three cards out of all of these releases that could like kind of be described as these are powerful. But then past that, you get into the context of are they more powerful than the other things that you could already be doing? Zabu's technically not Series 5. Surfer and Zabu are technically not in the Series 5 yet. I don't know. Every time anything is remotely playable, people are like, this is power creep. It's just like... Kronos, thank you for the Prime. I appreciate that. As, as someone... As someone who stopped playing Magic the Gathering because they made Lightning Bolt almost unplayable and modern with Power Creep, let me tell you about Power Creep. Because come sit on Papa Hoagland's lap. And let me let me tell you what happens in these other places. Leader has done more to make decks unplayable than any new card release has done to make other decks unplayable. There was a time in Magic where Snapcaster Mage was good. Oh no, Snapcaster is bad too? Whoo! Is that real, Underplix? Liliana the Veil ended up not being playable in Standard? That's fucked up. That's like big time fucked up. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All right, this is a Zabu into a double Spider-Man into a Hawk Rock Slide on the last turn, it looks like. Do I snap here? I think I snap here. Are discards ever going to be good again, or are they just too predictable? I don't think the discard deck was ever good. Okay, so we've both lost Zabu. to leave here I don't know that we can win the breaker right without our Zabu Black Panther is currently series 5 yeah yeah I think we're supposed to go they play one nine stat thing. In order for my nine stat thing to win the game, I have to, they'd have to play something very tiny. Yeah, there's, there's no way they leave. Yeah, they already locked in. Escaped. So, saying Marvel Snap has a financial incentive to power creep similar to Raid Shadow Legends or Genshin Impact or Marvel Strike Force <clears throat> feels strange to me or it feels like you don't understand what those other games do. Ricky Tone, thanks for the quarter of a year. And Liquid Quick, welcome back. In traditional gotcha games... When a new character releases, 
Um, it's available for a time to get, and then it disappears. In Marvel Snap, that's not how the releases work at all, right? In, in Marvel Snap, you have a card, and it comes out, and it's expensive, and then over time it gets cheaper and then basically becomes free eventually. Looking like a retreat angle. I mean, regardless of how, how power creep works, and the exact specific details behind it. Like, that that distinction, I think, is pretty, pretty important. We're just super dead to their time. I'm going to leave. Escaped. So, another, another way that differentiates this game from other games is in a gotcha game like Genshin or Raid Shadow Legends, if you start playing those games, you can spend money and wail and get the latest release right away with just spending money. If you're a brand new Marvel Snap player and you decide you want Shauna or Shadow King or Dazzler, you literally can't spend money to get to that card by design. And you can argue back and forth about whether or not that's a good or bad system. I'm not going to argue the merits of is that system good or bad. But I am simply going to point out that it's fundamentally different than other gotcha games, right? The goals they have here are different. So this is the, the people that talk about nerfing Ice Man. This is what they mean, right? I hit my one in four. People are mad the game has some semblance of patience versus instant gratification. It, it genuinely feels like that sometimes, yeah. Uh, actually, I don't think, I think I want to do this. Yeah, let's do, let's do this. No, in fact, Marvel Snap explicitly said there says there will be no refunds if cards have their text boxes changed. When you buy cards with tokens, it says there are no refunds or exchanges. <laughs> and again, like, this is just another good example, right? Like, we're complaining Zabu enables double Spider-Man on five. Arrow's a powerful, strong card that is natural counterplay to this new lockout strategy. And I get that it's easier to just sit there and bitch rather than adjust and learn to make changes. All right, chat, we've been rambling and I'm still new to it. So I'm actually gonna punt a cube here in this game because I need to take an ad break before it runs automatically. Non-subs, we'll see you in 60 seconds, BRB. Been, been ranting, ranting and rambling. Corey, thank you for the two years. Welcome back. Yeah, Cosmo interacts with it. Like. Arrow is not widely available like. Arrow is not widely available like Zabu is. If you are playing against people that have Zabu 
and a range of series three cards and four cards like Spider-Man and Absorbing Man, there's a very likely chance that you've had access to Arrow at that point. And Arrow is not the only card that plays into that, that type of counterplay. Uh, I have taken a contract with Twitch.tv for more money to play one minute of ads per hour, Venom. I also think, just to, again, to set expectations, part of the reason why I'm not one of the fucking mouth breathers out there who's complaining that there hasn't been a balance patch yet. Chat, do I want a balance patch? Yes. Do I wish there was a balance patch three weeks ago when Christmas was happening? Yes. But guess what, chat? We're literally just coming off of the holidays now. The people that work at Second Dinner are fucking humans with families who deserved a break in time off over the holidays just like the rest of you. So would it, would it have been nice to have the patch sooner? Yeah, definitely. But like, is it also not unreasonable that like they were slow over Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's and all the other holidays that happened in December? Yes, that was also reasonable. I don't think I could Zabu. I think I need to rock slide before I Zabu because once I Zabu, I can't play into Crimson Cosmos. That is also true that generally speaking, you should not make production changes over the holidays. Mood. Why did they kill Cosmo? We'll never know. This game's an L. has production changes on December 14th each year for this reason and we just opened back up yesterday. Yeah. Philly, thank you for the 80 months by the way while we were ranting and rambling there. Appreciate it. Welcome back. I think we have enough boosties to take Crystal to Red Border now, huh? Do. Let's do it. Crystal been performing. She's been fine. I don't know if I'm sold one way or another on her yet. I don't think I have enough games in. Am I Spider-Man enough to take to red yet? I'm playing him a bunch. Not quite. Need four more, four more boosties on him. Am I missing any cards? I'm missing Super Scroll and Best. I actually think Super Scroll is quite, quite good in these Zabu matchups, so but if I had Super Scroll, I'd probably work it into a lot of these Zabu decks. What balance changes would I make? Check my YouTube channel tomorrow morning for my thoughts on that.
Oh, oh, I messed up. Mm, I messed up. I was thinking, I was thinking I was gonna get a second hawk here, but I don't actually, right? Awkward. Awkward. That was very bad on my part. And because this is Mojo World, we don't lose to what's it called? So I, I need to spread out like this so we beat Doctor Doom. Yeah, we beat we beat Zola. Because if they Zola here, Zola's negative one, so they, they lose here and here. Mike, thank you for seven three months in advance. I plan to be here. Thanks for keeping me around. We tried a disruptive Zabu deck. We played some variations of that. We'll probably work on it some more today. You slow boated me out of five dollars. That is part of the incentive to sub down. And then this this is why I played Korg to the left, chat. Because Korg to the left meant we tied Doctor Doom and then we were guaranteed to win the breaker because of Mojo World. Is Darkhawk a better buy than Thanos? I think in terms of pure power level, Darkhawk is a much better buy than Thanos. I think Darkhawk was better than Thanos in terms of power level before Zabu and it is a solid step above post Zabu. What does a Zabu Surfer deck look like? I have not seen anything. I have not seen a Zabu Surfer deck that has looked good or reasonable. It like has some okay high rolls, but like the curve is basically non-existent. I think Thanos is a very novel and a somewhat playable card. I think if you enjoy the idea of Thanos, it is a fine pickup. Zabu Dracula is on my list of things to try. <laughs> Honestly, I probably should have snapped it when Zabu flipped out. I think this is a game where we're looking for a new hand. Dazzler will be a good addition to Thanos. Agree with that. The games where you don't get Killmonger, Dazzler will be very good. played Shang-Chi, he says, before getting Enchantress. Hey, Shen. Thank you for the two-thirds of a year. Welcome back. Let's set Silo take us. This was actually a run hot split. I think this is only my fourth one. Fourth. Fourth is the first time you can hit inked. 
fifth is the first time you could hit gold. Yeah, I don't think that was a terrible play. Your, to the person in chat that said their experience in Marvel Snap was not great because they hit infinite for the second time a week and have largely played against cheating bots. Um, that's because your experience is very atypical. You need to understand that getting to infinite in general is not the average player experience. And especially someone who's one week in, there just aren't other players that are similarly rated to you with similar collection sizes. So... You're largely hitting bots because you're punching above your weight class and they don't want to put you into players like myself that have bigger collections than you. So I get I get that that's annoying, but that's also kind of like a, a big humble brag style moment. That's something that's something that will balance itself out when you're two more weeks in and have all the series two cards that can play with, play with everyone. Brian eight, thank you for the prime. Appreciate it. Okay, so they got a copy of Mystique. Enjoy. The fact that their Daredevil got into Death's Domain is probably gonna lose us this game because I can't play for all three paths. I was under the impression that opponents should be facing or be using decks of similar pools that is available to me. Is that not the case? That's the case up until a point. Once you get into series three, like past collection level 500 or so, it starts pairing you into a wider pool, prioritizing your MMR and um, current rank a little bit more is the way it seems to work out. And again, just for clarity's sake, all discussion, including discussion from myself here regarding the rank ladder, is largely speculation. The Marvel Snap folks have shared some things publicly about things that influence the ladder, but we do not know this is how it works with certainty in its entirety. Any reason they keep that closer to the vest? I mean, it's twofold. One is they don't want people gaming the system by having good information on that. And two is giving up information like that is considered an industry, industry information, right? I find it incredibly unfair that I can be matched up against players who have and can play cards. That's that's true. It is pretty unfair. I think, that's, I think that's a good strong take. Do I need... They electrode. I probably am winning Mojo World since they electrode, right? I'm going to play the Sentry over here. And we'll wipe for this across. Hopefully they leech us here because leech makes Typhoid and Atuma better. Sure. Bots ever retreat? Sometimes, yeah.
Oh, that's interesting. I got punished. I got punished for playing a Tuma. I got punished for not playing a Tuma here. It's probably good enough, right? Yeah, they probably can't put two into Mojo. I agree. We're probably good here. Well, so again, when you talk about collection level, at a certain point, it's mostly meaningless, right? Like, my collection level is almost 12,000, but you get every series three card by collection level 3,000. So most, most of the collection levels past a certain point are just like, not super relevant in terms of dictating the power level of what's going on, right? I mean, collection level's not just money spent. Like, there's people that were playing Marvel Snap since the closed beta that, like, they have full collections at this point, right? You get, you get like, 600 collection levels a month almost at some point for, uh, for just playing the game. You know, like massive yeah the trivially massive ones but i mean like once the game has been around for you know years like a free-to-play player after a year is going to be collection level six or seven thousand it's a pretty big number A year is also a big number. Yeah, chat, but this isn't like a pump and dump game where they're forgetting about it after a year either. Like Marvel Snap is designed and intended to be a game that people will be playing for years. Like that's, that's the goal. The goal is to have something that's going to have longevity. How do you know if you're playing a bot? You can't fully know, but there's some tips on how to spot bots in this video here. Well, we're far enough ahead to snap, but I like our chances here. And you build a Zabu deck effectively with mostly pull two guards. You you could build one. I don't know how effective it is. Victory. I think the monetization team seems to disagree with that goal. They're treating the game like a pump and dump. God, that's such a fucking low IQ Reddit take. Saka PL, thanks for the prime. Literally releasing things you can't buy with money directly, but have to have spent a bunch of time playing to get. Yep, sounds like a pump and dump to me. Yeah, Snap's a much better game than Magic is Blur's Day, and I'm much happier to be playing it. Bloyd, thank you for the Prime, appreciate that. Play armor to the left in case we need to do a Tuma there, I think. People who spend money have quicker access to collector tokens. Yes, but you also 
have to be playing to use that money. It is not a, I spent money so I get cards. Do I stand for an eight hour stream? No, I split my time about 50-50 standing and sitting. And again, that, that nuance and that detail that really matters in my opinion. And maybe you're someone that thinks that the details don't matter and you're, you're entitled to think that opinion. But chat, in order to spend the credits that I buy every single day in Marvel Snap, I literally have to be playing Marvel Snap like it's my job. In order to get the max amount of collector's tokens per month, you have to be playing over a hundred hours of Marvel Snap per month. Over, over a hundred hours a month. I think anyone who thinks I was only jaded on magic because I played it for years doesn't understand the immense amount of damage Wizards of the Coast has done to Magic the Gathering and their brand in general over the course of the last few years. Hey, Bloyd. Good to have you. Thanks for coming over from day nine. I think we do this. I think I only put this and we queue up Shuri for our next big play next turn. The, the idea that I changed a ton and magic didn't is objectively not true. You're right that I'm definitely not the exact same person that I am from a decade ago, but also like, Magic five years ago to Magic today is just a completely different ball game. Oh, chat, Enchantress is a great draw. So Typhoid Mary has a detrimental ongoing effect. So, oh, so we get to go Crossbones here, doubled off of Shuri. And then we could go Mary into Enchantress in the middle. I guess, do I expect them to play middle though? Maybe I don't expect them to play middle. Where do we expect them to play for? It's harder for them to play middle, right? Should I play hard for the right? Oh, I can't play Crossbones middle, right? I'm dumb. Shh, ignore me. I've played this game before. It. The <laughs> uh, hold on, chat. Hold on. I'm going to speak ill of the dead here in a second. All right, nice leader abuser. Good chat. Um, someone in chat just got timed out for saying Rune Terra being free to play friendly didn't hurt Rune Terra as a game. These are sorry, this is the last one. These are the 2022 Legends of Rune Terra stats on Twitch. And obviously, Twitch isn't the end all be all of absolutely everything. But the idea that Legends of Runeterra is a successful game is like verifiably false by the metrics. To, to give you context chat, Runeterra in its first year and a half of existence, I believe it was, made $24 million. Magic Arena at its peak was making almost $30 million a month. Marvel Snap, a brand new game from a new company, made $10 million in its first month. Runeterra's, Runeterra's monetization, in my opinion, is a big part of why it failed as a game. Because every Runeterra player will love to line up and tell you that they have enough wild cards to craft the next four sets worth of cards in Runeterra, 
but they'll tell you that fact while they're playing anything other than Runeterra because they feel not compelled to play Runeterra because they own everything. Grayson, thank you for the brand new Prime. As much as we don't like to admit it, the psychology behind games like Marvel Snap is what it is because the psychology in these games makes them successful and keeps people playing them. And you could say like, well, Jeff, shouldn't people just play games because they enjoy them? Yeah, they should, but they don't. It's not, it's not even just, it's not even just purely about greed, Jet. It has to do with just how humans interact with these systems. Humans like, human psychology has people like, I should have snapped earlier, has people like the experience of having something to chase and get cards. It is fun to have something to work towards. And I don't, I don't know that Marvel Snap has their collection system perfect. I think they can iterate and improve on it. But the Marvel Snap collection system is very clearly designed with the goal that regardless of where you are in your Marvel Snap collection journey, there's always something for you to be working towards getting in terms of a new card. A well, snap early since we drew Zabu. Need to do that more. We've been rambling a lot. I haven't been snapping nearly as much as I should. It's like, honestly, it's a lot like YouTube clickbait in a way, right? Like, I don't think I've ever met a human being that's like, I fucking love getting clickbaited on YouTube. But human beings also behave in a way that incredibly rewards clickbaiting people on YouTube. So like, people say they dislike it. And it, maybe they really do, but they also can't help themselves from rewarding the system that they really dislike. I took your advice to snap with Zabu and Hawk and I've doubled my net cubes. Yep. Okay, taking their mystique is uh, we won the we won the X Mansion diff, and we drew the Enchantress. We have to lose our things here in the middle, but this is probably fine. I'm gonna snap them here. Yes, that's also true. It's important to remember that people that often complain about things frequently make up a vocal minority. Most of. Something, something that's important to understand too is if you are someone who's watching content on twitch.tv, that automatically puts you in this very small minority of people that play a game like this. Most people that consume content don't know that Twitch exists and could not care less about it. We're probably dead here. Well, that's interesting. I think in order to win this game, I have to win a 50-50 over here. How far am I away for full collection? Do you think you can maintain a full one once you reach it? I don't have to think anything. I am two cards off of a full collection, missing two series five cards. And if I continue spending the rate that I spend, I will be able to maintain a full collection. All right, we lost the 50-50, so we're dead. Someone asked, if you, if you know that Twitch viewers are a small percentage 
of a game's overall thing, then why do you consider Twitch viewership to be a valuable metric on judging a game's success? Because understanding the trends among the game's most invested players tends to dictate the health and interest of the game long term. Because what's also true is that the people who are most likely to seek things out on Twitch are also more likely to be spending money. You're more you're more likely to be spending be spending money. And you're right that is not the end all be all of everything, but it's also a canary in the coal mine. It's a if this is in trouble, it likely means other things are in trouble. Should I snap? I don't know if my hand's good enough to snap. Yeah, the location's kind of just like screwed us all around. So this is. Uh, I think I'm leaving. I think I'm actually leaving. Escaped. I think it is major copium if you think Rune Terror will continue to get. I think if Rune Terra was being made by any company other than Riot Games who has infinite capital to spew and have it be a loss leader, then it would have already been put out to pasture by now. AM Dreg, thank you for the prime. Yeah, hello. I think it is... It is likely accurate to say that Rune Terra was a loss leader to develop the uh, League of Legends lore IP stuff so they could have stuff storyboarded in a nice way going into other games in the IP, such as their upcoming MMO. Do I think what is true of Hearthstone and Blizzard? Hearthstone, Hearthstone seems to be doing well. Hearthstone also pivoted a little bit. I worked for some other game studios for about three years and Twitch metrics were often included in data analysis meetings. Yeah, for sure. People under, people in the industry understand this is an important part of the metrics they should be looking at. How did Hearthstone pivot? Battlegrounds was a pivot in the Hearthstone realm, right? That's what I am referring to when I talk about a pivot. Uh, this is Shuri into a Tuma into Taskmaster. We're punting Murray. I think I can stay here with Shuri into a Tuma into Taskmaster. And if you if you want to draw a comparison of Hearthstone versus Rune Terra. Rune Terra's Twitch metrics were down 60% for 2022. Hearthstone's Twitch metrics were only down 20%. And it's important to baseline those off of the fact that Twitch as a whole was down 13% for 2022. All systems go. Let's say they go Patriot Mystique. Patriot Mystique adds 16 here. We lose. Patriot Mystique adds 12 here. Up to 29. This only puts us to 28, so we lose to Patriot Mystique. Yeah, I, I think I think part of I think part of the reason is two cards though. I'm gonna stay for two cubes and get caught by Patriot Mystique. Um, I think part of the reason why Twitch was down overall is because of changes around COVID in the world, right? Like I don't think that's necessarily a Twitch thing, but you also baseline how far up or down you are in a category based off of the baseline of Twitch overall, right? So any Twitch category 
in 2018 in 2022 that had a more than 13 percent reduction in viewership performed worse than twitch did as a whole meaning that game category underperformed and by the way for people that are new to the channel we have a lot of people coming here ordered who is this guy what does he know what is your, his his background to talk about data stuff um i've been on twitch for a decade it's been my job for the better part of it's been my job for over five years now as a full-time job. I have a graduate degree, an undergraduate degree in mathematics, and I spent time doing data analysis and process automation at a Fortune 50 company for a little while before I started doing this as a job. So talking, talking about numbers and data is very much my wheelhouse. And I spend a lot of time looking at metrics in and around Twitch, in large part due to wanting to understand that part of my job. You talk about you don't play zero in this deck. Yeah, there's just not a good spot to play zero on curve, typically. This is the, the core issue. It is a Kirby HUD. All right, chat. We're going to play Sentry, and then we're going to draw Viper, and we'll go Viper into Mr. Fantastic, and this game's going to be great. I didn't work explicitly for an automation company. I did process automation at a large company. Why play the rock? Because I have to play rock to get into more act chat. <laughs> Godspeed, Elk. Why do you think Twitch was down in 2022? Twitch was down percentage wise in 2022 in large part due to the fact that um in large part due to the fact that it was up an incredible amount in 2020 and 2021 due to covid keeping people at home and lockdowns doing surprisingly well in the 40s we're playing a shield deck agent 13 quake kill colson fury no helicarrier neat yeah, I think shield with Dino is pretty solid. Victory. People, yeah, people, people went outside to touch grass. It was it to give you to give you the exact metrics on Twitch. So Twitch as a whole was down 13% in 2022. But this is so like this is. This is 2020 chat. And this I'll link this website for people that want to play with these stats in person. In 2020, when all the COVID lockdowns happened, for the entirety of 2020, Twitch was up 70% almost compared to 2019. And then in 2021, again, on top of the 70% increase from the previous year, it was up 31% again. So the... 13-ish percent decrease that Twitch saw. Sorry, it was actually less than. I don't remember what I was saw. Thir oh, 13% I think was magic, maybe? I misquoted the 13% number. 13% must have been a different number. Oh, it was down 7%. That's a huge increase. Yeah, so like it went up, it went up 70% and then 30% again, and then it dropped back down 7% as people started to go outside. Dingus Khan, thank you for the prime. I appreciate that. You're saying I should touch grass, something like that. After this game chat, we're gonna take our hourly ad break. 
For the regulars that haven't been here yet this year, I've taken a contract with Twitch.tv to play one minute of ads per hour on my channel for January. And I'll reassess after this month to see what the impact like is from that. My promise to non-subs is that those ads will not interrupt gameplay. So I will take a one minute break while I run those ads every hour. And subs, you won't see ads as always. Welcome, Waylander. Appreciate it. We're dropping by. Can't Mr. Fantastic Murder World, but I think I want to play him on curve because I have so many fours I want to play out. Uh, in the short term, Sleepy Dog, as long as Marvel Snap continues to do crazy metrics, I am all snap all the time, sand sponsored opportunities. My voice has changed dramatically. My voice has stayed the same. My audio equipment has changed dramatically. I had significantly lower quality audio equipment in other years. A Titania out of the expansion is gonna cause some silliness. Do I have a favorite card? I really like Juggernaut as a card. I think it's a fun design. I need Galactus. Oh, super punish. We're getting got though. I think we're dead. This feels like Galactus, huh? Do I make this play in the middle because it beats Galactus? Does it beat Galactus? They have Wolverine. Now we're actually dead to Galactus here. I think we leave. I think we leave. Someone asked, why can't I get infinite this season? Because people have more powerful cards than me. So when you finish pool two, you have all of the cards you need to be competitive in Marvel Snap. That being said, finishing pool two and having the tools you need to be successful is not the same as knowing how to play with those tools and more importantly, knowing what to play against. Marvel Snap gets harder when you step out of the kiddie pool around collection level 500 and suddenly are playing into a bigger range of things. It's easier to understand the decks you're playing against when your opponents have the same 60 or 70 cards, right? But suddenly, when there's 200 cards and you have to know that Hood into Wolverine into Hobgoblin means I should retreat there to play around Galactus, it gets a lot more complicated, right? And that's not a card differential either. A very common sentiment that I hear among inexperienced Marvel Snap players is that I'm not competitive in Marvel Snap, and I have to retreat too much because my cards aren't good enough. Chat, I have almost every card in Marvel Snap. I retreat in almost 30% of my games. 30%. At every level of Marvel Snap, you should be retreating quite frequently having a baseline understanding of what your opponent's deck do and loss mitigation. Actually, chat, you want to know a fun stat? I have I have a stat on um I'm gonna do this. We're gonna hit the, the minus eight, I can feel it. Um for the current season chat, while well, I'm this is okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up here in a second.
All right, so we've lost the right. The question is, can we win these other two? Maybe is the answer. No is the answer. All right, chat. So I've been retreating at the start of the season. When I'm trying to climb, I retreat more aggressively than when I'm in infinite. My retreat rate for this current season of Marvel Snap is almost 36%. And I have almost every card. So again, needing to retreat and understanding and leveraging the cube system to climb successfully is not based on how many cards you have or how good your deck is. 36%. Non-subs, I'll see you in, I'll see you in one minute. Yeah, it's just one in one over one in three games, I end up retreating. This is snap.fan. You can use the tracker from snap.fan if you want to track your own stats. But like, this is again, I, like more people don't talk about this. People are so focused on, I don't have the right cards and they don't focus on, they don't know what they don't know. And they need to focus on learning and getting better to climb up the ladder. Yes, that's, that's actually a really, interesting stat to call out here too i've won seven more games than i've lost where i didn't retreat but i've netted 115 cubes for this season yes i'm i'm playing on steam this tracker works on android and steam and if you're on ios and you want the tracker to work you throw your garbage jailed phone away and you buy a real phone arvinar thank you for the half a year welcome back So yeah, to, just to, to talk on this one more time, just in case anybody missed it during the ad roll. I've only won seven more games than I've lost this season where I stayed in at the end, but I've still netted 115 cubes. That's why I'm rank 83. That That's the big thing you should take away from stats like this. That is that website is a community tool called tool called snap.fan. What is my favorite deck to play in Magic? In Magic, I really like to play decks that cared about attacking and blocking. Yeah, the tool doesn't work for iOS because Apple doesn't think you're smart enough to be allowed to have access to your phone's hardware and software. So Apple, Apple puts the kid gloves on for you to make sure you don't hurt yourself like a widow baby. For most people, that's probably for the best. You're not wrong. You're not wrong that Apple isn't wrong and that maybe they should save people from themselves. Whoa! Juked by the beast, chat. Juked by the beast.
think I'm pulling him out of here. Actually, I'm going to... I'm going to pull him out. And I'm going to Mr. Fantastic. And then I think I'm going to Shuri. I think I want to play for left and right here. Actually, I don't want to pull him out because then Dagger will get bigger. Yeah, let's just let's just do this. Let's do let's do this. Yeah, so they can't play for this side because of Fisk Tower. And then Mr. Atuma puts down a giant mess of stats here, right? And then I move Zabu, and we go... Well, do I move Zabu? Do we think they can beat 15 over here? What are the odds they beat 15 on the left? Basically zero, right? So I, I should just go hard on the right to make sure we don't lose here. How's the credit cap actually work? You can't claim things that are guaranteed to give you credits while you're at the cap. You ever played with Agatha? Yeah, we play Agatha occasionally. Not while we're trying to ladder up, but for fun. Outside of laddering up. Uh, we tried the Zabu Hazmat deck and it didn't feel very good, so it's probably not going to get a highlight. We're just like casually adding 34 power here on the right this turn. We're good, right? I think we're good. Okay. Okay, that could have gone... That could have gone much worse. Victory. What do you think is the strongest deck in general to climb with? I think in general, the style of deck that's the best to climb with is one that can put lots of power into play on the final turn. Okay, so... I want to share this because it's not, it's not great. Um, this is, this is a little yikes. When are series five cards dropping to four and four to three? We're still working on the plan. We'll make sure to let everybody know as soon as we figure it out. I uh, w defended we don't know when they announced the system seven weeks ago. We don't know as of yesterday, January 3rd is, 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 is awful. They, I mean, I, I get that there was a holiday in there, but like, yeah, I guess, I guess like, they better figure it out real quick. Real, they need to figure it out real quick. I, 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 I'm still glad they're not saying something and then going back on it, but yeah, I, they, they need to get it figured out and let us know what the first batch is soon. Yeah, so the we don't know yet implies that we're probably not getting any downgrades this month, which I think is incredibly detrimental. I think, I think series five is already too large and they need to start downgrading cards out of it. I am expecting to probably get a mass downgrade at some point. Yeah. 
is likely, likely what will happen. Yes. Pool, when Silver Surfer gets added to Series 5 this week, it, Series 5 will be bigger than 4. Is, is accurate. No, Series 3 cards will not drop to 2 because Series 1 and 2 are intended to be introductory and giving you important tech cards. Alright, and unfortunately, we lost this game to Sandman plus Avengers Compound. If our opponent, if Avengers Compound wasn't here, we'd just Enchantress this and then we'd beat them on 6. But because Avengers Compound is here, we'll just retreat for 1 cube. Escape. Orca is not in the game. It was not included due to a bug. The most generous interpretation that is they are close to making a decision is accurate. Yeah. Agree that that is the most generous. Hood into Viper into Zabu, definitely a step. I do not expect them to ever add more cards to Series 2, no. If I'm not trying to min-max, do you think using gold on variants is a waste? I think spending gold on things that make you happy is a wonderful use of your gold. So if variants make you happy, spend away. Which cards do you think are likely to drop to Series 4 first? I, I assume the order they will drop cards to lower series is based on how long cards have been there. So I would, I would wager that we should expect to see, um, I would wager that we should expect to see, uh, I don't know where I want to play armor. If I play armor here, I can't enchantress the Quinjet. But if I play armor here, I can't um, Viper a Sentry thing. I think I'm playing armor in the negative zone, as weird as that sounds. Yeah, I think Daredevil's probably a good card that archetype. I agree with that. It's actually on the, the list of things I want to try. Oh, well, that's perfect. Love it. Is Death Wave still a good deck? Yes, Death Wave is great. Yes. Yeah, that's true. The fact that maybe we're supposed to save Enchantress for a dino. The game has too many restrictive locations. Restrictive locations are one of the things that make Marvel Snap a great game. Restrictions breed creativity and the game is better off for it. Sometimes lucky. 
We needed it too, chat. We needed it too. The Futa, thank you for the brand new prime. I forgot they had copied their free card from the raft. Nailed it. What do card series means? Card series are grouping of cards. You learn more about how those work here. Hey, thanks for the support, Gentex. Good to have you in chat. Snap Zabu, good cards in the opener. Feels Iceman, man. Reddit was right, chat. Nerf Scorpion, Nerf Iceman. Completely unfair. Please get rid of them. All right, this is very likely the, a leech leader abuser for what it's worth. Shang-Chi, we beat leader though. Yeah, this looks like the dino leader list. Sometimes, sometimes it has leech. Please nerf Zabu chat. Zabu's too strong. Please, please nerf Zabu. It's way too strong. What's good to note here, chat, I actually messed up, right? I could have played around the arrow. If I would have played hood into here, I would be minus 21 at 21, and then I would have won here. I should have I should have been thinking about arrow as the range of cards that deck plays. Chat is correct that that looks like KM Bess's arrow, arrow leader, leader deck is one of the stock better decks in the game at the moment. Otter Disappointment, thank you for the brand new Prime. And Dad Bod Cortez, appreciate the support as well. Restrictive locations are good for Marvel Snap because restrictive locations are the ones that generate the most unique play patterns that require you to think about the game most drastically differently than your other games. Without incredibly restrictive locations, games of Marvel Snap would frequently be repetitive and redundant in an incredibly uninteresting way. Also, and this is something that enough people don't acknowledge, a big part of Magic the Gathering's success as a game 
is due in part to the fact that it has games that you just lose to mana screw. And why does losing games to mana screw make a game like Magic the Gathering successful? Well, let me tell you a little bit more about it. So, because you lose games to Mana Screw and Magic the Gathering, it gives you organic brain breaks, moments in time where you're still technically playing the game, but you're not having to think about it nearly as hard. And those types of organic brain breaks are valuable to allowing people to continue to play the game for extended periods of time. To give, to give an example with Rune Terra, one of the reasons why Rune Terra, in my opinion, failed to click for a lot of people as a card game is in large part due to the fact that you never get a brain break in a game of Rune Terra. You always have to be thinking about what's going on and what your next play is, the way the priority system back and forth works is. I think this probably wins, right? This is uh, 16 and five, and then we make the lizard smaller. As a cute shelf variant. Yes, you have put my cards in the middle. Does Taskmaster copy ongoing buffs power? It does. You spend the whole game in the tank and it's not sustainable. Yeah. So like, I like I stream, we did 13 hours of Marvel Snap on Monday. I did long 13 plus hour streams of Magic the Gathering. So I like, I'm used to streaming and playing games for a long time. My brain was always fried to crap after like four to five hours of streaming Runeterra because your brain is always going when you're playing the game at a high level. And those moments where you're still technically engaged with the game, but you get a little bit of a break, make the game better for people that want to play it a bunch. Yes, as much as people will complain about things like mana screw in a game like Magic the Gathering, a lot of the people that play Magic like the game because of mana screw because it lets their bad decks win games that they shouldn't be winning if they if the, the variants didn't exist. When did I play Rune Terra? Uh, I'd have to go back and check my metrics. There was like a five month period where Rune Terra was the game that I made my content for. That's my, my primary content game. Hot take, just take an actual break if you need a break. But that's not how humans work. You could say, well, if you need a brain break, you should just log out. And I'd be inclined to agree with you, but I'll also acknowledge the fact that that's not how people work. I think adding a friends list would be fine for Marvel Snap, so long as people can't add me to their friends list after a game to send profanities to me via a direct message. I do not, I do not think that would be good for Marvel Snap. I think his hand's quite strong enough to stab. That's a good start. Fun later. But Valkyrie deck is the most fun in my opinion. I had so much fun with uh, the 
what's it called version. Oh, hopefully I don't have Killmonger this turn. With the, uh... Oh, I'm blanking on it. What was the build that we played? Oh, the Doc Ock build. There's going to be a Doc Ock Valkyrie build up on the YouTube channel uh, later this week. It was a ton of fun. Ooh, that's a good take as well. Putting the game down and walking away also doesn't constitute a brain break. It just means you're doing something else. Like that take a lot. It's a good observation. Oh, I'm not winning here. Awkward. Maybe my snap is not good. Monka, Monka not good. Do we just Enchantress the Patriot? Probably, right? Probably. And then we Shuri here. Do I want to double the Enchantress though? Probably don't need to, right? It could have been right to save the Enchantress for the last turn to maximize cube equity. We, caught, we cost ourselves cubes with this line chip. Best series four cards to buy from the token shop. Check out my buyer's guide here. We'll have an updated buyer's guide for series four and series five cards coming out uh, soonish. Thoughts on Zabu so far? Seems like a neat and fun build around that is likely competitive. I, do, I don't know, and I know this is not the answer you want to hear. So I apologize for bringing what is potentially a harsh truth. I am not sure that Zabu feels good enough without series four and five cards. We'll perhaps try a few other things at some point, but the things that I have felt the most competitive with playing with Zabu are the series four and five cards. Darkhawk, Shuri, Sentry, these all feel like really important cards to make Zabu playable. And even, even at a minimum, even without looking at that, Absorbing Man is also a Series 4 card, right? Absorbing Man feels like a pretty important one to making that work. I think, I think at, a, at a minimum, I think you need Absorbing Man. What if I Zabu here so that way I can go four drop into Sentry? I think I like that. Actually, Adam, thanks for the brand new Prime. I pulled Null in a box last night. What's the best list you've played with him? Um, Probably Galactus. I don't think Null's actually that great. If I'm, if I'm being honest. I've been, I've been very whelmed by Null. Right, we're going to play for left and right here. So we put 18 here. You know what? It might have been right to do these backwards, right? Because they have priority here. So if I would have played Mary here, I wouldn't be shang chi -able. I've exposed myself to Shang-Chi with this line, which is not good. They already played Hawk Chip. They don't have another one.
Also, and this is an important thing to point out because a lot of people always seem to forget it. Um, the best decks until kind of proven otherwise chat are still the best decks from last season. So like, just because Zabu got added and folks like me are working on are working on things doesn't mean that they're necessarily better than the other things you could be doing last season. Like we played against the KM best arrow arrow diner Lido deck. All right, hold on. We'll pull up the leak patch notes here in a second. Yeah, I can see that being good, being good, uh, duck. Is Drax good for a zombie list? It's fine. Oh, you know, it's not fine, this more egg. This more egg is super awkward. Our hand is kind of bad. We could take a mulligan. No, I can I can win this game. We're gonna go Shuri into 20 power Atuma into Taskmaster and Barsa to Stern win. Give me, give me a second. Go right! Wait, is it crate call? Tell me if this is crazy. What if I go hood into a Tuma, right? That's worse into... That's worse into... Uh... That's worse into uh, Shig Chi, but they have to play two cards to Shig Chi, be right? Oh, it doesn't work because of the Shuri interaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good show, good show. Thank you. Oh, fuck, Taskmaster. All right, I'll leave now. <laughs> I forgot about Taskmaster. All right, cool. We saved a cube. Okay, so. We don't, we don't know. This says patch notes got leaked in Korea. This is Reddit. This is unconfirmed. Take these with a grain of salt. Uh, snap when you have Zabu early, clear. Leader loses a power. Galactus loses a power. Nova loses a power. Drax gets one base power. Sure. Or it's also an arrow nerf. Oh yeah, let's just go right to the source. Arrow loses a stat. Oh no! I lose I lose hazmat inside of Cerebro one. 
rip Cerebro ones yet. Professor X no longer moves an Oscorp tower. That's nice. Decreases the chance of Warrior Falls appearing. That's interesting. The number of collector's tokens by receiving all series three cards will change. Individual payout tokens are not set at four. Maybe these aren't real. What is what is this website? All right, let me pull this website up on another browser in case it's something like porn. We're not showing it on Twitch. Yeah, so it looks like well, so this is translated, chat. These are these are in Korean. I've used these are Google these are Google Translate. This is a Korean website that Google Google Chrome has automatically translated for us. Please let this be cap. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe. Maybe the amount of tokens we're getting will go up on average. Animated. Oh, wait, go back. Go back, hold on, someone pointed that out. They will be releasing a pro bundle that includes 12,000 credits plus boosters to upgrade eight common cards to infinity. 12,000 credits. Orca's getting added to series four, sure. How much gold how much gold does 12,000 credits need to cost um, to be a reasonable pickup? Yeah, the, the credit cap must be going up too, right? Are they increasing the credit cap again? For people saying it sounds like they're removing the hundred tokens. No, chat. The what that what they are doing is they're changing the guaranteed 400 tokens you get currently when you are series three complete to a range of 200 to 600, according to that. And again, that is unconfirmed and leaked and could be fake news. We'll see though. Copium take, the patch is delayed, and they leaked the notes to see what feedback is like. Okay, yeah. They're playing 4D chess, sure. They're the White House press secretary now. <laughs> oh no! That's fine, I didn't want to play any cards this turn anyways. Take your cube. Escaped. That's true. The credit cap might not change because they're giving you boosters with those credits so you can spend them right away. That's uh, reality. Did they take Leader out back and put him down? They did not. 
Leader, leader is effectively exactly the same as it was before. What's considered a newer player? That's a good question. Based on what that says there too, it sounds like that bundle might be available right away. Cause it doesn't have tokens in it, right? Cause people always post and ask, hey, they post and ask, hey, what, um, they basically post and say, hey, uh, wh why can't I get the collector token bundle? This is the real, the real nerf to Galactus chat. Big crashy game energy. I think we're dead, huh? Mr. Flanders, thank you for the four years. Welcome back. Yes, it sounds like they just want to add. So, the change of the collector's tokens when your series three complete being 200 to 600 instead of exactly 400 sounds like they're not actually changing the economy. They're just tweaking the dopamine machine. Creating highs and lows when you're opening tokens out of the reserves is more exciting. That is 100% a dopamine machine change. I can't say too much publicly. But I had to log in to say that the delay and leak sometimes happens when a publisher and a developer are fighting and need data to act on a key financial disagreement. Yeah. Agree. Do we snap on the we armored your hood and squirrel girl into Krosha? Because these were definitely supposed to be carnage, right? Oh, not, not close. Chat, nothing beats rock. Um, hey, Dice Cop, thanks for the prime, appreciate it. There's no sub for Century, uh, probably just a tech card. Probably just a tech card. I think we had Tuma here and then Taskmaster here and hope that's good enough, he says, before getting waved. That feels incredibly spooky. Oh, it probably is a bot. Maybe? I don't know. These are all cards a human could have split.
Taskmaster is 12. Yeah, I'm gonna stay and click. I don't know, this could be a person. Could be a wizard, could be a bot, could be a stream sniper. Oh, fuck this card shit. I'm pretty sure this was a person. Also, if leader is really only being reduced to three power, it doesn't functionally change anything about the metagame. It's, it's, it's exactly the same card. Although, do you know what's funny, chat? We, do we lose on the right side by one? No, it's by two. Okay, I was say the arrow. Yeah. We got Scar Diff, chat. I am inclined to agree with it should be six one at best. Yes. Dice Cop, thank you for the th the re the, la 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 la, the brand new Prime three minutes ago. Looking at a number and failing to say it. Oh, they're locked, jaw, not a leader deck, most likely. Got it. I'm just playing Enchantress out for stats. Enchantress. How are there so many people fluent in another language in the stream? Is this primarily an American chat? No, North America is only is less than half of my viewership. That is a gorgeous wasp. be able to see I used to be able to see stats on where people are watching from my Twitch dashboard but it looks like they moved them Spike win copium play some some lockjaw today i agree that that deck is great how did their gene get so big they shuried into the lockjaw path because they had archery I snap them. Not only do we have the Viper the Hood across, but Bar Sinister is not great for uh, Thanos deck on average. They're, those decks are tight on space.
pretty good. So Shuri into Big Demon Atuma right, I think. You want me to Zabu? I don't think I have time. I don't think I have time to Zabu, right? I think I'd rather just like make my numbers go burn. All right, we dodged it hitting Demon and Atuma, which is ideal. for a little bit and playing Zabu for two days straight. All right, chat, after this game, we'll take our hourly ad break, stand up and stretch. I need to run and grab some more water too. Switch to a Thor deck and immediately get Sinister one then. It's a good beat. Make some Mjolnir's. Like my chair, it's fine. King Joshmo, thanks for that prime for the second month. Welcome back. Ready for Mjolnir to be. Me too. What could be broken with the change? Never assume you understand someone's spaghetti code mess without uh, without having seen it yourself. Yeah, we'll probably play some Cerebro 2 today as well. Cerebro, Cerebro 2 and Lockjar are the two things I climbed the most with last season, if I recall correctly. There hasn't been a lot of Leech either. We'll probably play some She-Hulk double up. It's also been pretty good to me. Maybe some, maybe some Moon Miles as well. I'll post a highlight with that this morning. I like that deck. Is that good without Thor? What on earth is going on? Okay, they're Cerebro 4. They must be Cerebro 4, right? Face the might of Asgard, Please go mid, Thor. Please go mid. Mjolnir. God bless. Let's punch the Sant Man. typically retreat when you're playing Cerebro 2 and you run into locations that mess up your power. Not always. Part of the reason why I think the Cerebro 2 deck is the best Cerebro deck is because of its ability to be resilient through interaction. And disruption like that. Mjolnir to me. Mjolnir to me. You want Odin in this deck instead of Hulk? I think it's not good. I think you struggle to have board space in a number of games. Is part of part of its problem. Oh, they're gonna get to move something to the right. That's interesting. 
Oh, technically I can move to the left as well, huh? Sleeping? Yeah. Victory. I did not. Let's take a look at chat. We'll see you in one minute, non-subs. When we get back, we're gonna take it a longer, take a look at a take on the token shop for Mr. Broad together. BRB. Uh, I'm gonna run and fill up my water bottle while we're on a 60 second break. Be right back, subs. subs missed the whole desk rising up. Stormfire, can someone in the public Discord server screenshot whatever someone is trying to tell me is a more nuanced take to my phone? Maybe, maybe I just need to suck it up and actually join the public Discord server again, but I really don't really, I really don't want to join it. For screen purposes, to get first hand information, but hate large public spaces on the internet. Hey, Jarhan, thanks for the prime. And Stormfire, thank you as well. Afternoon. Our Taurus, DK. Bios. Haven't, uh... All right, thank you for the person that just sent me the screenshot. I actually, I actually just tried to join the public Discord server, but it's not letting me join. Discord is hung. One thing that is a bummer about the pace of token acquisition before unlocking every series three card is about 1K tokens per month for a free to play player. Enough to get a new S3 card of your choice. Once you have all the S3 cards, it goes up to five and a half to 6,000 a month or enough to get one series five card or two series four cards. That's enough for you to get your favorite series five card from the three and every four release. I think that will feel a lot better when the new series five cards don't feel impossible to get, but most players haven't collected all of series three yet, so it's not feeling great. There's a lot for us to figure out. This doesn't, this doesn't say, this doesn't say anything we didn't already know. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I get that this is more expanded than the, this doesn't share anything in terms of what their downgrade path is. Or they, it doesn't, it doesn't say that. This is just Ben, this is Ben confirming that all of the math I did six weeks ago is correct, which is good to know, chat. If you didn't know this, you could have known all of this six weeks ago when I published my video talking about it. There's my, there's my video breaking down collection acquisition rates and stuff. So it's good to know that my math is correct. 
things. Things I am capable of. Reverse engineering, very convoluted mobile game data systems. Am I a math genius? It's either that or I know how a spreadsheet works. One of the two. Either, either could be possible, really. What's the difference? <laughs> The worst part when I worked my office job was all of the people that knew you were, knew I was the Excel guy, which meant you just got a lot of really stupid questions constantly. Like, how do you, how do you make a pivot table and other stupid things that they should know how to do in Excel simply by virtue of working in an office? This was not the, this was not the vision I wanted for Christmas. Yes, by Googling it. I frequently made a point of Googling the answers to people's problems in front of them as a passive aggressive means of being like, hey, bud, you should do this yourself. Like, like when someone would come to me with a question, I would open Google on my second monitor. And, and it wasn't that I even knew how to do it. Like I had to look it up most of the time because there's so many miscellaneous stupid things you could do. Pass infinite was more stats, was it? Probably. This is 26. Their hawk is 13, right? Their hawk is 13. So they'll be 23. So we're beating hawk here. Also beating arrow. I'll never forget when I put in my two weeks notice at that job when my oldest son was born and I was going to transition to being a stay at home dad. They told me, Jeff, we don't know what we're going to do without you. And the first thought that passed through my mind when they said that was, I only work for an hour a day, so I don't, I don't know what you think you can't replace. <laughs> I guess the funnier part about it, and this is speaks to the immense amount of corporate waste, is my only working for one hour a day there had previously been two other people's jobs. So the work, the work that I was doing in an hour a day had previously been the work of two people at that company. Just like big, big LOL energy. Hey Zeus, thanks for the quarter of your real life office space. Chat, office space is parody based on reality for sure. Oh, I should save the wasp for more. Like, yeah, probably. I don't know. I just wanted more stats over here, but you might be right. Is my graduate degree in statistics? Oh, it's more judge and Eric math than anything. Mm, I guess if I do this though, yeah, I got punished for playing the wasp and they're probably an ultra deck, right? So I think we're dead. No, I had to physically be in the building for eight hours a day, Bry guy. That was the before times. So they Ultron mid, Ultron things are currently plus five each. So we are dead. Escaped. Escaped. 
big dudes with Sandman feels good now. Big dudes with Sandman will feel good until you run into people playing good decks from last season, and then Arrow and Leader take you in a trash can and shove you inside of it. Even, even then, I'm not really convinced that Sandman is all that great into the average better Zabu decks that play to the board before turn three. Sandman's probably fine when you're running into people that are playing Zabu decks. They're just like playing pass, pass, pass until turn three. Sandman, Sandman's stat line is real bad. Face the might of Wait, after turn three, Adarok to lose by strike. Oh, wait, it only cares about losing here, right? I was like, well, I didn't think Adarok, but. Dream Dimension's real sad, sad for us, chat. I can't Thor next, Jane, Jane next turn. Ratchet just like took our really good draw and lost this the game. Someone earlier had asked about Doctor Doom in this deck. I prefer the individual cards that go tall rather than going wide. You also get into a lot of situations where you fill your lockjaw path, and then Doctor Doom can only put ten stats into play. These t I've played a lot of this Lockjaw archetype. It's one of the ones I use to climb with most seasons. I really, really like these specific cards that I'm playing here. They are, they are my favorites by a good margin. We're still leaving. Just couldn't do anything the previous turn. Escape. Is Crystal good in a deck like this? So, Crystal looks appealing when you draw all your six drops. But the problem with Crystal is you have to draw Crystal when your hand's already fine. And you randomly flip Crystal out of Lockjaw, having her not be good. You can substitute Magneto for... Um, what's the word I'm searching for? You can substitute Magneto for... Uh, Giganto or another big thing. Stats. You want you want stats in that slot. Oh, that's an interesting thought that there being more rocks in the metagame potentially makes this deck worse. I didn't think about that. I don't know, that just would kind of make the deck just like, I don't think you change the deck. You probably just choose not to play it instead. I agree, there's more Korgs than rock slides with an Arcox going around, so maybe this is a bad deck for, for lettering with. If you are someone sitting at home and you're thinking, gee, Jeff, I wish I could play this, but I'm missing card X, Y, or Z, this is one of the handful of decks that I have an ultimate deck guide for on my webs on my YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. <sighs> Does Widow's Bite stop me from drawing with Jane? I think so. Yeah, I think ongoing destroyer is great. Um, we have, a, we have a thing here. I mean, I have a website that I I make sure it's functional, but I don't have deck lists or anything like that on it anymore. Putting putting deck lists on the website is just way too much work for how little return you get. We lose the Shang Chi in the middle, but other than that, we should be pretty well good to go. Oh, we could lose to Shang plus something else on the left here if we don't flip into anything big. But we do have Magneto in our deck still. I also suppose there's a world where Magneto flips out and then Darkhawk gets us in trouble. 
think Absorbing Man is a watch list card. Now, I don't think everything playable is a watch list card. I think Absorbing Man struggled to be good before this season, and now that Zabu exists, um, now that Zabu exists, it's like finally reasonable. And I'm glad that it is. You don't need to play the Widows by there. That's good to know for the future. If the leaked patch notes are correct, I am fully expecting Arrow Leader decks to still be the best thing you can do at Snap. Thorium Light, thanks for the quarter of a year. Welcome back. Still just by Ben. What patch notes? Exclamation point patch in chat for potentially leaked Korean patch notes. You can use Google Tran you can use Google Chrome to translate them automatically. And if you're using a web browser that doesn't have an automatic translation option, consider throwing it away and getting a reasonable web browser. Or just learn Korean. Yep. These are these are your choices. Watch one of these be carnage. Please be carnage. Please be carnage. Never lucky. Someone in chat said that's an official Marvel Snap account in that post. Okay. Sounds like they might be organic. Should Lady Thor go left here? No, I think I want to play for the vault. Maybe that's, maybe that's wrong. Is 18 enough to win here? I guess it's not even really 18 though, right? I really hope the token change is wrong. The token change sounds exactly like something they would do. Leaving the numbers exactly the same, but adding a small amount of variance to make it feel better from an emotional perspective. Uh, Crobon Mobile should translate for you. These are... These are locations. These are locations. Okay. Let's play a game. Zion, thanks for the prime, appreciate it. Holy fuck, 
bro. Holy fuck, bro. Are you kidding me? They didn't have this when they snapped back, chat. They snapped back before they got sentry. Oh! Oh, it wasn't Agent Cole, so it was Agent 13. Never mind, I'm wrong. It really sucks we didn't draw Magneto, huh? Who wants to bet eight cubes on a one in three? Oh, they filled. Dead. Dead. We missed anyways, brutal. Oh. All right, Lock Thor was not kind to us this morning. Time to pivot. Well, that makes my, what is my turn two play easier? I think the Lockjaw deck is very good. It's one of the many decks we typically climb with. I am not intending to play bad decks until we get back to infinite, so we're not playing streamer one. Just spend a, spend a week or so climbing up. I feel like the single power changes are significant. I think it depends on the card. Like, I think the change to arrow is significant. I'm not sure that the change to leader is significant. Maybe changing both of them together is significant, but I don't know. Could go either way. What do we think of this? Well, we'll consider doing viewer decks again once I'm infinite. I think this is probably, probably reasonable. Says before losing to Dr. Doom. Wait, do we beat Dr. Doom? Suck it. Victory. Suck it. We're up by six, they're up by five. Goodbye, Doom. That Spider-Man variant from the season pass. No, that's the Spider-Man's never been a season pass. Miles Morales was a season pass card. Breaker, breaker, give me the cubes. I got a one point over you. That's one of the many changes I suggested, Cassette. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. Wind. Oh, you know what I needed to do, chat? Um, I need to uh, swap goose. Excuse me, goose for invisible woman, because of uh, Bach, because of uh, the new card. 
No, you don't. We don't need Luke Cage yet. We do. We just want Blue Marble for invisible. Or Beast for invisible bit though, to protect against zombie enchantresses. Thoughts on M'Baku and Cerebro? Um, I think he's worse than your other options. Mystique? Frustrating. The token nerf isn't a nerf, chat. It's a very minuscule change to the dopamine machine that doesn't change anything long term. Calling calling the token change a nerf is a misunderstanding of what they're doing. Might be a nerf depending on the rate though. The translated text says the rate would be the same. What are tokens? Tokens are a resource you start getting past collection level 500 that allow you to buy specific cards from a shop. The space throne is about to end up somewhere else, chat. So is Morag? God, these are certainly a set of locations. No, there is a comment from Ben about not knowing what they're doing with card series downgrades yet, which is a little disappointing. If the Smace Throne appears in a spot with more than one card, multiple cards get to stay there, which is why I'm spreading my cards out left and right. Yeah, I assume they will take everybody's money for the Pro Bundle. Hey, Power Ranger One. Thank you for the Prime. Appreciate it. Okay. So the way Mystique works underneath Invisible Woman is so long as the last card I play this game has an ongoing effect, she will copy that ongoing effect. I want to do this, this, and then we'll go blue marvel is my plan.
I trying Invisible Woman instead of Goose? No, I'm still playing Goose. That's why it's in play, and Invisible Woman is in the deck list. Think I should have snapped? Uh, I don't know. We lose. We probably lose the Darkhawk Mystique, right? Thirteen. Not. Nah, do we beat Darkhawk Mystique? No. Because this is only gonna be. Uh, these are five, fifteen. Um, and then sixteen, and then twenty. I guess we did beat Darkhawk Mystique. So yeah, maybe we should snap. I didn't count it. Enchantress right is not good for two. Yeah, yeah. Enchantress is a reason not to as well. This is a commonly played card. Although the Darkhawk builds have less room for tech cards, like Enchantress is worth noting. Thanks for the Prime Power Ranger. Wondering if Invisible Woman is better in most situations than Scorpion. No, so Scorpion is a card that has a better average case scenario. However, Invisible Woman is a card similar to Goose that is very good in our hardest case scenarios, which is our opponent has played a card um, like Enchantress to take away our ongoing effects. So the Invisible Woman slash Goose slot explicitly serves to mitigate counterplay into our strategy. Why not Yellow Jacket and Cerebro 2? Which card am I currently playing do you think Yellow Jacket is better than? And why do you think Yellow Jacket is better than that card? Remember, there's only 12 slots in a given deck list. So it's not just as simple as saying, oh, we should play this card because it works with us. You have to break down, oh, is this card better than what we're already doing? I think Hobgoblin is significantly better than Iron Man in this archetype. And I don't think it is particularly close. Hobgoblin is much... One of, one of the things that is good against Cerebro are things like the Negative Zone and Akrosha. Things that give minus power at a location. And Hobgoblin is really strong into those locations that can be bad for you. While also just being a large generic point swing. Something, something that's always amusing to me is that people love to tell me that they think this deck isn't very good, but they also love to tell me they don't think I should be playing Hobgoblin, and those two things are related. Another good example. People say, oh, you could never beat a Scorpion. Hobgoblin gets better after the Scorpion, you champ. Z, thanks for someone for three months in advance. Good to have you here. Uh, we Hobgoblin, New York. We slide Iceman down. We Blue Marvel here. We win the game. Maybe. Had to hit the one card we didn't want it to hit. That's fine. We didn't draw. What's it called anyways? Then we have to hope that 8 11's enough to win mid. The real Mysterio's mid, we could lose this. I'm playing a rock to the left, just gets bigger from Blue Marvel. Victory. Another stream, another day defending Hobgoblin. What's going on, Wombat? You can see you're not new here, even if it's your first time chatting. Do you retreat if you get hit with Scorpion in this deck? Do you retreat if you get hit with... Did you not watch the game we literally just played? Where they scorpioned me, it made my Hobgoblin better, and then we won? Oh, Twitch chat. Christo does stuff. Thanks for doing some sub gifts. That's super generous. Appreciate that. Silent Aki, thanks for upping for the second month. Good to have you back. Oh, 
Thanks for the prime one, man. Best beginner deck. I've got some starter decks for Series 1 and Series 2 stuff posted here. We might be torched this game. Let's see. We'll see how the rest of it comes together, I guess. We lose priority here, but I think this is still a Hobgoblin Murder World angle. <laughs> Favorite control style deck. I'm a big fan of the Magneto Kingpin archetypes. I like the ones that clog the board. Really glad we didn't play for the center. Doctor Doom, huh? All right, we have Blue Marvel or a Mystique here. Invisible Woman does it. And Odin. I mean, Odin doesn't matter. The Hobgoblin doesn't matter. Yeah, we could fill, but we can't win the left, right? Escaped. Yeah, if you're missing cards in this deck chat, you just replace them with your favorite two power things. Uh, we're probably just supposed to storm the eternity range wow i figured they were gonna play here and then we'd lose it our hand must be awkward this have zabu well zabu means they probably can't play into crimson cosmos right to know if we can hobgoblin them. I'd be kind of surprised if they filled the Shadowlands. They could play around. They could fill by play, playing around hobgoblin, though. Unfortunately, our hand is not strong enough to snap, but we can stay with them not raising.
We can win the left, but I assume we lose the right here to on average whatever five drop they draw or if they're playing, um, or if they're playing Chavez. Thank you, love. Escape. I mean, Dino's not super likely out of the Hawk deck. I guess if you think maybe it's likely because they're playing Coulson, maybe I could see that. Oh, there's not there's not a lot of room for non fours in the in the Dark Hawk build. You gotta do so much to enable it. Then they double Dark Hawk. Yeah, but they couldn't play Dark Hawk on the right because of Crimson Cosmos. I accept the terms and conditions. to storm the Adelan, but the icebox had other ideas. How's the surfer matchup against Cerebro? It's close. Storm in the right location could often be useful at choking their board space. This is why Iceman should be nerfed. here. Do people seriously think Iceman and Scorpion should be nerfed or is it just a meme? I'm too afraid to ask at this point. taking the maximum possible time every single turn is real annoying. They disconnected? I don't think they're disconnected. Because usually the game speed picks up once you've disconnected a couple of times, right? Maybe Adeline crashed her client? Maybe.
no lunchtime Agatha. I'm not infinite yet. We're gonna mostly play reasonable decks until we get back to infinite. We'll still play a variety of things, but I'm gonna focus on playing things that I think are more competitive until then. I don't think they're disconnected, Chip. When you disconnect, it speeds up the next time you go through. And they've, they've run the rope out the maximum possible time. It is 12.15 where I live. Yeah, maybe Adelan bugged them. I have no idea. No, 12.15 is the Midwest for people that don't live in the U.S. I live in fly, I live in flyover country. Yep. Is the Midwest considered flyover country? No, flyover country is out west of me, right? I live in the Midwest. Victory. What is my work in the Midwest? Is this. Making content here on the internet is my full-time job. Did I quit my normal job to stream Marvel Snap? No, I have been making content here on the internet as a job for uh, over five years now. Before Marvel Snap, I streamed Magic the Gathering Arena and other turn-based and strategy card games. Marvel Snap is just the card game I've been enjoying the most of and we're kind of all in on it, as long as that's the case. Yeah, I think the negative deck's great. I agree with that. We'll probably play some of that today. Well, oh, snap back. We got Invisible Woman and Dawn Slot Citadel. Oh, I bet they snapped because um, they're Patriot on the Citadel. That's interesting. It might be bad for us. I get to storm in to fill the center, but we can definitely lose like a good Ultra draw here. Uh, well, my wife and I have talked about my metrics in the past, Aerolite. The number, the number I shoot for in order for Twitch to be a sustainable income for my family is around uh, twelve to fifteen hundred concurrent subscribers in a month. And to give to give context with Marvel Snap, at this current moment in time, I have three thousand two hundred and sixty-four concurrent subscribers. Thanks for being another one of those, Ellie. Appreciate the prank. Dude Light with the pile of sub gifties. Happy, uh, what day of the week is it? Happy Wednesday to you. They all blur. My kids went back to school for the first time today after winter break, so all the all the days are kind of mushing back and forth. Super Floyd, Mr. Sh M Show, these are dropping off some of Jeff Bezos' money. Appreciate you.
Uh, do we gotta go, chat? Do we gotta go? This is gonna be plus eight here in the middle. Are you about to be on a hype train? I, uh, I have hype trains disabled on my channel. Hype trains are a predatory monetization system to encourage people to spend money on impulse that they might not have or actually really want to spend getting caught up in the moment. It's very similar to predatory tactics in mobile games. So I do my best to turn those types of things off here on my channel. Harumbi, Skittles, thanks for the brand new primes. And Dracostein, thanks for the two months. Appreciate you re-upping. Yeah, I think that's probably accurate, Kinetic. Sinister is a good one to play in a danger room. We don't have hype trades here, we have bad trades. <laughs> Is there a way to reorder your decks to client? There isn't. It'll be a welcome addition. Sam Fisher, thank you for the brand new sub. Appreciate it. This could be worse. Check Blue Marble over here, and then Brood's probably our best drum. Yeah, Enchantress gets us here. Maybe they don't have it, Copium. All right, so we're good if Daredevil lives. Motherfucker, are you kidding me? Uh, are we good anyways? All right, we're good anyways. Whoo, sometimes lucky. I didn't count. I forgot we were going to sevens over here. I forgot we were going to sevens over here. Fate narrowly avoided, champ. Narrowly avoided. I think Invisible Woman is better than Goose into Zabu decks. Because the purpose of Goose in this deck is to help protect our ongoing cards from getting Enchantress. And Enchantress costs just two energy against Zabu decks. I'm gonna put Brood into the expansion so nothing can pop out of here and mess up our Cerebro bonus.
They still can't play into the goose lane. They can. I promise you I understand how the game works. What card I designed for a new card is to have. I'm not really a game design type person. Just enjoy playing. People think Danger Room has a 25% chance to hit, but actually it's 60%. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, do we snap on... Hobgoblin into the Iron Man? Maybe? This might not be good enough. We'll see. to go Cerebro Mr. Sinister, right? I think Hedges is the best. This gives us 8 in the middle, and it gives us, uh, what, 12 here? I think we're good, right? Yeah, good stuff. Victory. You could have won with Mr. Fantastic, right? No? It would have only added four, so they would have gone to eight. It would have been less power than what they had. is a decent location for us. Iron Man especially. Valkyrie means we win the game. We get to go Iron Man into Mystique into Valkyrie.
It's a pretty big range, Taka. Your MMR is good or mine is bad. Maybe a mix of the two. Golem Gaming, thank you for the Prime. Yeah, we've actually broken 4,000 concurrents the last two days, Lazarus. It's kind of crazy. A lot of hype around the new season. And rightfully so, Zappa's a sweet card. Got a poke second dinner into doing the right thing around uh, around some stuff. Yeah, if there's Cerebro 2, this Valkyrie will be very good. That is accurate. Maybe I'm supposed to Black Widow in the Baxter building, actually. Although I guess I can't Valkyrie there with the Invisible Men, so maybe not. What do you think of Collector's Tokens, Variants, Changes, and the Leaked Dotes? I assume they're going to be the exact same variants as we had before. Is what, what looks like was implied. What's the deck you intend to climb to infinite? I'm only playing decks that I think are good for climbing until we get to infinite for the next week or so. Yeah. I think this deck's a fine choice. I could lose to Krusha here, I guess. I am. Okay, they just think they're winning Baxter building. Hopefully Iron Man makes that not the case. Oh, are we about to get Hella? No? Dracula usually means not hell, or Apocalypse usually means not hella. Well, that's an infinite. All right, well, fuck me, I guess. Oh, shit. I wasn't paying attention while I was eating, and there's an ad starting momentarily automatically. Let's take our 60 second break. I was feeling like sitting down, anyways. See you in a minute, not subs. I was like, why is this little button orange? Oh, it's telling me there's an ad coming up. Let's make sure we don't overlap gameplay here. Oh, stupid desk. Please go down. Leader nerf? What leader nerf? If you're someone hanging out who is wondering on card replacements for this Mr. Negative deck, if you're missing something, Mr. Negative is one of the handful of cards I've done an ultimate deck guide for. You can find all sorts of budget lists and alternative card suggestions for series three, four, and five cards that you are missing in the Ultimate Mr. Negative Guide on my YouTube channel. It is, it is fine to say you disagree with or are unhappy with the balance change, but do not insult the intelligence of the design team in my chat. Thanks. I also was hoping for more than happened, but you also need to remember these changes aren't set in stone and we know for a fact there's another patch coming in January. So if these changes don't meaningfully change anything and they might not, this isn't their last chance to do something about it. I'm chilling on Psylocke for now. I'm Mr. Negative on four.
And what's in my deck? Sarah, Valk. I'm gonna snap them, I think. My moving widow. No, I probably won't have time. Remember, the vault's gonna reopen on turn seven. Wait, did they just play nothing? One Sarah, please. This Twitch stream is pre-recorded in front of a live audience. Thanks everybody for hanging out today. Appreciate you being here. Man, that artwork looks good, negatived. Are they a bot with the inked iron fist? No, if they were a bot, they would have snapped. This will go up to six, seven. I'll be 28 here in the middle. They have three cards in their deck. This is 10 on the left. That's probably enough. I am Iron Man. Okay, maybe a bot. I don't know. I can't tell. I am Iron Man. Oh, is Mystiquing the Dark Hawk more stats? Maybe. If I mystiqued the hawk, the mystique would be six, and then I would be 13 times two is 26. No, mystique the hawk was less. The rainbow face item on the shelf behind me. That is a uh, Marvel Dice Throne. Oh, Where can you see the leaked notes in English? By installing a web browser that has the ability to translate from another language like any reasonable modern browser should. I would recommend Google Chrome. Uh, I am not accepting deck submissions. Do who I Black Widow? I kind of want to. And then we go like Marvel into Mystique into Valkyrie. Sure, this doesn't matter because we'll just Valkyrie the, the right. Who's my favorite hero to play in Dice Throne? I like Black Widow because she draws cards. Do I have room for magic? Think so? Arrow could happen here. I didn't play the Mystique because it's better for cube equity that I don't play the Mystique. This 
should win the game. A snap to order, right? Good shit. Good shit. I think you really need the Valk on the left. So I just won all three. Easy peasy. Victory. This game is a good example of why Mr. Negative is a good laddering deck in my opinion. You put an incredible amount of power and swing the game in a big way on the final turn in a way that is often difficult for your opponent to predict, meaning people frequently stay in games that they are losing, giving you the maximum amount of cubes that you can get from that game. Decks that generate big swings in unpredictable ways, especially ones that can add power to locations that you otherwise look locked out of, are some of the best decks for climbing. You see the Leech Leader meta is dropping already. Leech has become a lot less prominent. Leader is still very popular in my experience. Turn three negative, that's a snap. Silver, Silver Surfer calmed down a bit, which made Leech less popular. But Leader, Leader is still pretty everywhere. Win. I still play Mysterio in my Lockjaw deck. No, I've been playing Armor in that slot. If you are someone that is looking for other variations of this deck, you can find them in the full guide to Mr. Negative on my YouTube channel. Yeah, the baby variants. I think some of them are good. Some other, some others I don't care for. Okay, good shit. Mystique was better. Oh, Mystique was Blue Marvel. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's fine. You're correct. Mystique was better. That's fine. We were winning either way. You're right though that Mystique was better. I forgot Blue Marvel was last when we played. I took turn five off and my brain shut off. Can you someone explain how Darkhawk works in this deck? It's just a big stat number. Darkhawk, this is one of the few Darkhawk decks that he's just really not important in. Uh, that style of deck really is impossible without something like Darkhawk. Comic Keys Kid, thanks for the brand new tier one sub, appreciate that. And the new bundles worth the gold if they don't gain collector tokens. No, likely not. Depends on what their pricing is. Depends on what the pricing is. The magic number you need to understand about bundles with credits and gold chat is that typically you get 1.25 credits for every one gold that you spend. So like the 12,000 credit bundle that was mentioned in the patch notes leak, that bundle has to cost what? 
like 8,000 gold. If the 12,000 credit bundle is 8,000 gold or less, it is a good buy compared to buying gold daily. But again, good is relative and subjective. And that again only applies to it if your idea is you are going to be spending money on gold anyways. <laughs> the 12,000 credit bundle should mean I'll be able to buy Bast though, which just sounds great. I'm excited, I'm excited for that. Actually, let's Mr. Negative Hell's Kitchen and then we'll plan to Valk here down the line. Ideally, we draw magic next turn. Okay, so they could literally have any of the cards in our hand. Literally could have any of the cards in our hand. Doesn't, doesn't feel great. How much is a 12k bundle? We don't know yet, chat. How many collection levels is 12,000 tokens gets you? Uh, divide by 50. Loosely. And it's not quite enough collection tokens for a whole card. It's like half a card. It'll be like 300-ish levels. It's three. It's 300-ish because of the extra credits you get along the way. It's 250 in the raw extract, but that doesn't account for the fact that you collect levels arbitrarily as you progress. Why are they changing the collector tokens amount to make the dopamine machine feel better? Opponent snapped. Uh, I'm not going to snap the back, but we're definitely staying in here. I want to see what they're doing. Yeah, they're changing the token numbers to be variable to make you more or less excited about it. Ah, okay. Quality spooky energy here. Had to wait for the pre-roll ad to finish before they decided to do that. Literally unplayable, chat. Literally unplayable. All right. Yep, yeah, extra cube. Escaped. Why was Magic not playable? Uh, she's not playable on turn six per her rules text. Something that I need to make a point to say more inside of my deck guides that I, I thought would be inferred, but I've had to say it explicitly a lot, so I very clearly need to make it more clear. Um, chat, if you have some of the cards for the non-budget deck, but are still missing some, you should look at the budget deck and split the difference between them. Is what Is what you should be doing. Play him right. We might Valkyrie there. It feels obvious. I'm astounded that it needs to be said. I thought it would be obvious too, but I have to say it quite frequently, so I'm pretty sure it's something I need to start saying explicitly. You assume Orca is Black Panther. No, there's a character called Orca that was left out of the most recent patch. Because it had, it had a bug. It was supposed to be in Series 4 originally, but got left out. Play here in the hopes that Ironheart and Blue Marvel can win the left. Is Captain Marvel just a worse vision? Uh, Captain Marvel is a different vision. It's like the TLDR. I 
you need a nerf. No, I only win like 51% of my games, Chet. I am, I am appropriately, I am appro I am very much appropriately powered. Molt is another Marvel Snap content creator. They stream and produce videos on the YouTube side of things. Don't I don't believe they do Twitch at all. Camco, thanks for the prime. All right, Ironheart's looking a little green. If you hold on to the Mystique. Hey, thanks for the wasp. You know, honestly, this is a deck that probably gets worse than all the rock slides running around too. Thinking, thinking about it. We'll go magic in the middle and then probably Sarah next turn into play some stuff out in the final turn. Yeah, there was a Zabu highlight uh, posted uh, this more yesterday and the day before for the two Zabu decks I've liked the most so far and there'll be a third one going up tomorrow. I posted a... Yeah, but so my win rate in my win rate outside of my win rate inside of infinite isn't really relevant because I play <laughs> the points are made up and the score doesn't matter once you're inside of infinite is like the TLDR. So I, I, I play like the points are made up and the score doesn't matter once I reach infinite. Do we think Blue Marvel going to 14? What happens if they rock slide me? If they rock slide me, this goes to 14 and then I'm winning based on this. And then Valkyrie here is also good, right? I think, I think this wins most of the time. I think they're also going to maybe consider staying because their draw has been good, but... This might this might be a bad step and pushed about. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I was supposed to snap. Maybe maybe I was supposed to snap going into the turn. I don't know. We didn't know the Valkyrie was coming though, right? Might have, we might have just cost ourselves a cube there. Might have they might have played Go Fish for one. I don't wanna play for three. Yes, that is Molt, who does stuff on YouTube. That's their account. Stream said, I don't think so. Usually not something other, other content creators are doing. Yellow Jacket into Wolverine, chat. What deck are we playing against? 
All right. Well, now you see the Galactus, so you know. But these two cards mean Galactus, FYI. Okay, so I'm gonna keep priority going into next turn, hopefully, and then we're gonna Galactus the runes. Okay, damn, they didn't have any ramp. Why is Yellow Jacket in Galactus? So the Yellow Jacket Galactus decks are usually playing Adam Warlock and they use Yellow Jacket to enable it to draw cards to get to Galactus more consistently. Or Galactus plus the ramp. And again, chat, if you're someone that's like, I'm struggling to climb and my deck's not good enough, your deck isn't the problem. If you can't look at Yellow Jacket into Wolverine and go, this is probably Galactus, that's the skill you're missing. Being able to look at your opponent's early plays and conclude what the likely output range of their deck is from the first couple of cards that they play, you will be unable to snap and retreat appropriately. The number one question I get asked is, Jeff, how do I get better at snapping and retreating? And there's just not a clean, easy answer to that question. You can't skip doing the work of learning the format. There isn't some, this means this. I guess I guess you could, in theory, make this big giant flowchart about it. But the reality is it's just game experience playing, knowing what likely means what. I'm gonna snap with Mr. Negative into Magic into Sarah here. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to slide my monster over. Do you recommend opening all collector's caches now, given they will change tokens for, to fix 400 for two to 600 flexible? The average amount of tokens is said to still be the same. Also, the contents of your collector's caches is determined when you hit that level on the track, not when you open them. So waiting to open your caches doesn't change anything. I think a video of me running through clips of gameplay and talking about what might or might not be from different decks would be a very useful and educational video for helping people get better at Marvel Snap. And I also think it would be something that would perform awful on YouTube because people don't want to sit and watch that kind of content. Funny old pal, isn't she lovely, chat? She's beautiful. Do do do. I think we want to play for the right side and the left side. Thanks to Valkyrie showing up here. I still believe in heroes. Ick Fury. Right. That's an old, that's an old exchange, Bushi. It was changed to when you get them in the patch that added collector tokens. You said you could ladder with any deck. I said your deck is less important than snapping and retreating appropriately, but playing a worse deck will make things harder to ladder for sure. 
All right, I think my plan to play for Monster Isle is no longer in effect. And we do this. This puts us to 28 here. And then it sets us to a winning amount here. Oh, we lose the breaker, motherfucker. I am. Oh, that's frustrating. It's so disappointing that this card isn't changing. Even if this thing had fucking zero power here, we still lose. They're taking one power away from leader. It functionally is not changing. The nerf essentially does not matter. It doesn't doesn't change anything about Death Wave either. It's a hundred percent to placebo nerf. It sounds like just an incredible amount of work in income prep. So like the problem with good, good video ideas is that a lot of people don't understand that like doing video editing and doing atypical things outside of the range of content I already produce is incredibly time consuming. So it's, it's hard to justify spending time to branch out to do something new into something that likely won't have a lot of success when I could also just be doing something else instead. Do I snap them back here? I'm gonna snap them back here with Mr. Negative Drone. I could hire somebody, chat! Like, the amount of time it takes to hire a video editor to do something, like, high quality video editing can take like an hour per minute. Like, it's, it's incredibly time consuming to do high quality video edits. Like, I can't even imagine how much time Cozy spends on his average video. They're so well done. I mean, it's just like, if I, if I spend, you know, an entire day editing one, one video and it performs twice as good as my average unedited stuff that's just kind of scuffed, like that's an, that's an awful use of my time. Good old rock, nothing beats rock. Eight cards in their deck, so this is seven. Magic counterproductive to the Dark Hawk. It is, yeah, but like, look at this deck. Look at this, look at this game, chat. They have seven cards in there. They're three cards are deck. This is three energy, seven stats. Three energy, seven stats is fine. You could, you could maybe even argue it's good even. Oh, they punted. They punted mid. We could lose, we could lose mid here on Monster Metropolis. Oh my God, none of our things went Oh, all right, so we lost the coin flip. 
I miss that they... I miss that they passed in the middle. Maybe we're just... Maybe we're supposed to assume that they play for Monster Metropolis because of the bonus there. If I would have put Iron Man in the middle, we would have been minus two, but then times two. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think I'm supposed to play Iron Man for the center. They could have also just like ended up flipping there and we lose, but I think maybe given the information that we had, we're supposed to play for the mid. Oh, Bushi, okay. They, I thought they communicated. I wonder if Ben, I'm pretty sure there was a communication saying that changed in the token patch. Maybe it, maybe that change didn't make it in. My understanding was the contents were set when you opened them with the previous patch. But perhaps, perhaps that didn't make it in. I do not think any series four or five cards are worth investing your tokens in until you have all of series three. Not everything you do is about is about making money. Yeah, I understand that there's more to life than making money, but listen, chat, I'm not here on twitch.tv. I don't, I don't invest 10 to 14 hours a day in Marvel Snap content just because I love it. If Marvel Snap content didn't make me any money, I'd still make some amount of it. But the reason why I'm able to be here for eight to 10 hours a day and then do two or three hours of video editing on top of that, putting stuff together for the YouTube channel is because it makes money. So I, I'm glad that you're happy and you have fun doing educational stuff and making no money doing it. But like, I can't just do it out of the kindness of my heart, right? And like saying, well, you should take the time to make an educational piece, even though it won't be profitable to do that. Is It's not like I'm replacing fun time with that, right? It's I'm replacing time when I would be making other stuff that I know is successful to make this other thing that's less successful, even if it would provide value to some people. Your, the amount of time you have in a day is a very finite resource. I can't just get more of it. We're ready. Thank you for the prime. I appreciate it. This hand is like awkward, but it isn't. If we can dodge drawing Iron Man and Mystique next turn, this hand's pretty good. We still have Mystique and a few others in our hand. Play tokens at Matt currently. Almost none. We spent them all getting Shuri. notes or LinkedIn chat. If you haven't seen those, I'll have a video formally breaking down my thoughts on them in a concise manner later tonight. Everything, everything I know chat is what's listed in Angela and Sarah are together as things were intended. Everything I know is what's listed in, uh, in the thing. I just know what you know chat. Exclamation point patch.
The inverted gold angel, it does look great. All the negative cards where the gold background uh, isn't, uh, is inverted is wild. Uh, when daily videos start getting five digits worth of views, the YouTube stuff starts to become a reasonable source of income, Bungrando. I, I invest time into it because it sees a good return. How are we winning here? Valk actually isn't that useful. The fact that we didn't draw Mystique is pretty rough. Hey, thanks for keeping me around, Gregoriel. Nice, opponent doesn't know our hand sucks. It's... I think it's a good thing that they're not taking wild swings at buffs and nerfs. I mean, I just wanted leader to actually meaningfully change. I agree, in general, taking a light-handed approach is ideal. So, Darkhawk has a decent leader matchup. And again, just to, just to rehash the arguments we've said a thousand fucking times. The problem with leader isn't that there aren't things that beat it. The problem with leader is that the best answer to how do you beat leader is play a different deck. And in a game like Marvel Snap, where you can't buy specific cards that you want directly, telling someone they need to buy a different deck to be more competitive into a specific thing is a really shitty answer. Like, yeah. Kazar, Cerebro, Patriot, and Darkhawk. Those are all great things to play into leader. That is, that is accurate. Get good cards. I'm gonna stay through this. I don't know that our hand's good enough to snap back. We've got Zabu. We're looking, we're looking okay. He snapped and did nothing. Interesting choice. Yes, also that. What if you don't like the subjective playstyle of Dex the Beat Leader? Big agree there. All right, now I snap them back with the Rock Slide Draw, I think. Oh, they also haven't played the Widow's Bite. Yeah, I missed that. What are they doing? You think they're a bot? Why do we think they're a bot? Bots sometimes don't play? I don't know, Chad. I think you're underestimating how often humans make boneheaded mistakes. They taskmaster here, it's 27. We have to flip a coin for four cubes. Uh, if it's a cheating bot, we just lose. <laughs> oh yeah, if they play into Lechuca Golia, we win though, right? Yes. You won the breaker? Do we win the breaker? I think we win the breaker. Okay, good shot. 
You think bots cheat. I know bots at the higher level cheat, Jen. So that is first-hand information from second dinner. And if it's news to you that first-hand bots cheat, that high-level bots cheat, you should watch my video here breaking down bots with everything that we know as well as speculation on bots. One away from finishing the weekly challenge. I tentatively pin Bast for now. Might I might pick this up. I think if I pick up Bast, I'm going to have to get Shauna a little bit late, but that might be worthwhile. It's considered high level, like ranks 80 plus. The link is now broken, is it? Did they unpublish? <laughs> All right, well, that that verifies that these are accurate. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I left. Hold on. You can't take the pee back out of the pool, chat. This is on the internet. Once it's on the internet, it's there forever. I'm taking screenshots real quick here. Uh, I left the, the, the page open. All right, sorry, but I... Subterranea and I have Hawk Mystique. Now. How do people request collection checks for me? Man, chicken, thanks for the quarter of a year. I'm not doing collection checks right now. I don't like just pulling up people's collections and then not actually playing them on stream. And I really don't feel like playing with other people's cards at the moment. Many games not super conducive to that. Thank you, Moon Girl. Thank you, Moon Girl. We're dead. It's probably a retreat angle. Sabu, no way to uh to get there. Full three complete at 29.50. That sounds about right. It all sounds about right, chat. It's been about an hour. We're take a 60 second ad break. We're taking a chill from gameplay while we do that. You're not gonna miss anything. See you in a second.
Because our boosters. You got Spider Man boosters yet? Need four more. Need four more Spider Man boosties to get him to red border yet. Four more. Three Spider Man deck. The only comp really competitive Spider Man deck currently requires Zabu and Absorbing Man. Zabu, Zabu, Absorbing Man, Spider Man, Moon Girl can kind of go into a lot of different things. Like you're losing anything more consistently so far this season? Nah. Daredevil's fine with Spider Man, but in my opinion, Spider Man is worse than both. Professor X and Gamora. Moon Girl and Devil Dino are getting a Disney Plus series in February. Yep, should be fun. Being stopped this season so far. We've stalled out a little bit today. We climbed like 12 ranks yesterday and the day before. That's just that's just how it is, Jet. You can't you can't expect to always climb. Some days you're the pigeon, other days you're the statue. As long as, as, long as we tread water, we'll eventually have a day where we streak up. Daredevil is notably good against our uh our Spider-Man nonsense later though. It's noteworthy. Bunch of stats into play here and put a bunch of rocks into their deck, I think. Sunspot Armor Patriot. Excuse me? Please help me understand why people are saying the Galactus Null deck should be nerfed by making it so Galactus can't be played before turn five. It doesn't help. Making sure the 15 months died. As always, people are silly. I'm gonna play Spider-Man in the mines. I'm gonna play Darkhawk in the middle. They could be Ultron, yeah. The Daredevil is strange too though. I'm not really sure what they're doing. Are Pool and Sirius synonymous? They are, yeah. So pools are what the community had referred to the card groupings as before second dinner came out was like we call these things series Friend neighborhood spider-man here Friendly neighborhood spider-man here Literally the Spider-Man meme, yep. Well, I mean, we're beating Ultron, right? Not sure why they thought 15 was gonna be good enough here. Obviously they're winning left. Victory. 
They were gonna fix the visual bug where the rocks and vibraniums go into the opposite deck. At one point, they had fixed that, and then it got rolled back in on a different patch, so. Zapu, Hawk Rock Slide with Korg. Definitely a snap here on one. I really kind of... We got Shuri. Someone just mentioned Panther, Panther Zola. I kind of want to try Shuri Panther Zola. That's probably pretty good. No, the visual is wrong. The rocks go into the correct deck and the visual is just backwards. Uh, Gotta try. Or I didn't have to try and now we're dead. Oof. Oof. Sequence this way in case we draw Absorbing Man. Friendly neighborhood Spider Man here. We're dead to Hobgoblin. Fact that I put an Ed Central Park in Eternity Range is real, real bad for us. See, Ed, any one of these things to not be in these locations would be in a good spot. Yeah, if they have an absorbing man, they also get us. But Zabu deck, they recommend full pull three, but no Dark Hawk. I don't know that I love any of the Zabu decks without Hawker Shuri, if I'm being honest. You also kind of need Absorbing Man at a minimum. about doing speaking of decks that don't have any series five cards this is an absorbing man so i was thinking about trying this like mostly good cards maybe i'm supposed to play sentry in here with viper and carnage although mysterio makes sentry worse Do I cut Mysterio for Sentry? Can see that. Is this enough cheap cards? One of the things I was thinking though is Mysterio is good with rescue. Is that part of the idea? Mysterio's fine. I guess it's would I rather have rescue or sentry? Sentry's more flexible. Sentry, sentry's more flexible. He plays out later. Although he has to play with Carnage, Carnage or Viper. But I guess uh, rescue like kinda has to have Mysterio too.
I made videos on the deck making process. No, there's not really a concise way to say this is how you build decks. Your rescue is super telegraphed, I think is part of the problem. Agree with that. We could just play Professor X too. As a, a way to just like have another way to lock down with Daredevil. Cause I technically only have Drax and Spider-Man as things that are good with Daredevil at the moment. plan on having tokens change with card variants. No, they plan to sell token variants separately, though. That's what they've said. I like how we talked about how I was thinking about other decks that didn't have Series 5 cards with Zabu, and it's like, nah, I actually want Century. Yeah, it's probably a good snap. It's a good show. Sentry is a touch clunky with the feature location. That is true. Case in point. Cards, please. The Drax change is actually a nerf for Absorbing Man, right? Something to note too about Professor X is Professor Xing the right is technically another way to play with Sentry, right? Because if we if we Professor X the right, the Sentry Void just can't be added there. They're about to weave me. Um Then I definitely want a Viper this turn, right? If they're waving me. This all this will cost uh, four next turn. All of my my fours will still cost two next turn through the wave. Hey, things are dropping by, Sundo. Wave's not amazing into Zabu, but New York kind of makes this game a cluster like it always does. Uh, I can only put 10 power worth of stats into play here. And we have priority, so like the Shang-Chi doesn't do anything. Fucking hate New York so much, chat. It's such a goddamn shit stain of a location. People, people are always like, which location do you like the least? And people name ones like Lechuka Golia and stuff. This location, if if you are good at Marvel Snap, this location loses you more cubes than any other location in the game. And while other locations 
have variants in them, the variance output from them is fairly predictable when it comes to knowing whether or not you should retreat. Every turn six with New York is basically, every turn six with New York is 100% a giant coin flip. It's not pure skill. It's not. When there's too many possible permutations, you're not reading what your opponent could possibly have. You're just flipping a coin and hoping for the best. It's the incredibly full opposite of skill. Big agree. The hood and uh, Viper that across here in Jotunheim. Hey, Dingus, thanks for the prime, appreciate it. Yeah, it's 100% just like an RNG fiesta. Delving Secrets, thank you for the brand new prime, appreciate it. Hey, well, welcome to a live one, Dean. Good to have you here. I like Zabu so far. I think it's awesome that Zabu feels like it's added another unique build around archetype to Marvel Snap. Player choice isn't technically RNG. Take your actuallys and go away. How do you feel about Rhino versus Storm? Storm is a much better card and sees a lot more play. Being able to lock your opponent out of a location when you build your deck around knowing that that's a thing that can happen is quite powerful. It was not the carnage I wanted for Christmas. I think this is our best chance to win the game. Damn it. Wait, are we good there? We're actually still good there, huh? Because the hood was so little? That's great. L O L. What if I do this? This is plus uh, seven. This is plus nine in the middle, up to 14. I think I like it. I think I like it. If they have hammer and a six drop, we're in trouble. Are we good? Oh my gosh, we lose by one. Oh man. Brutal. We're up by one, they're up by two. Close game. Close game. I'm happy. I'm happy with our choices there. It didn't quite break our way in the end, but happy, happy that we tried. Opponent snapped. We won if we didn't carnage there. Yeah, I guess. I guess a uh, bad take though.
Hey, crown by Kiwis. Thank you for the, the tier one. Appreciate it. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Yeah. There's just no way plus seven is enough to win here. Six. Escaped. Man, we cannot get these last four Spider-Man boosters to save our lives. Yes, your pin card can still be open today, reserve or a uh, or cash. Tempo carnage feels like a tempo carnage. This is kind of a punish for the Tempo Carnage. I didn't Viper mid because I wanted the Sentry plus Viper this turn. Obviously, we're getting punished because they're playing Galactus now, but that was why I did what I did. Uh, we're 20% to win this game to draw Absorbing Man next turn. I can't fight for it back right now, chat. They have priority. One and one and five to draw absorbing man. Nailed it. Victory. Spider Man being a meta playable card also serves to make Galactus a bit worse, which is fun. <sighs> Chibi Absorbing Man needs to stop staring into my soul. That smile, chip. That smile, he knows. He knows. Yeah, I really wish I could. I could like filter my collection to like see all my pixel variants so I could build decks for meme purposes. It is statistically correct to typically play hood into face down locations, but it does bite shot occasion. You hate most of the pixel variants. Yeah, you and everybody else. How do you get monochrome? It's not a variant. You have to keep splitting your cards.
Chat. Chat, they made my cards not have abilities. In... In Washington, D.C. They made my cards not have abilities in Washington, D.C. God, can we catch a fucking break today? Holy shit. Just like, get leeched. Have a player leech us while DC is in play, and then like, Magneto hits the, I get. <sighs> Very frustrating. That Sanctorium in the middle. into the lab is lovely because the lab will be somewhere else here in a second we've drawn a lot of non-rocks here which is good more effective to use gold on missions and to save up for bundles if the bundles are similar to the ones we had in previous months it's slightly more efficient to save up for bundles only only slightly Professor X locked the mid, and then Shang Chi gets him on the right next turn. They could armor us, I suppose. Is it crazy to go in on the left because we drew sentry? What if we do this? Well, I guess the absorbing man here doesn't matter because um, the negative eight's gonna get us. I don't want a carnage right. I only need to win over here, right, chat? And this is uh, 14. So you know if they full pass. We could lose. Yeah, I don't know. There's there's permutations where we lose this other rather late. You see how much time our opponent wasted by hitting retreat later, chat? Where it's like we wasted the entire time going back and forth through permutations. You want to absorbing me in the sentry, not shang -Chi. No, that's not good. That would only end up with us 11 on the, the left side and only 12 on the right. We just, like, lose to their vision. Because vision, vision can slide to the left in the lockjaw path without tucking itself in. We definitely, we definitely have to shang -Chi there. Uh, you are guaranteed to get a... Series four card from reserves every 40 reserves group of 40 reserves It's normal and expected 
Y'all have a full formal breakdown of the patch that we got uh, later. Later on YouTube. We didn't talk about it for a little bit on stream, but we'll cover it again on... Uh... Oh, thanks. Nice. Honestly, I should have snapped here. Oh, that makes me a little bit happy that I didn't snap, I guess. a video talking about my thoughts on the collection progress in Marvel Snap is something I've loosely thought about doing, but I'm also not sure if I want Reddit to hate me more than they already do. What's it take to get pull three complete free to play? About six. Saying Galactus is swiggy and unpredictable. <laughs> Gonna take a stream break and wander down to the capital. I think there's a reasonable chance I can be speaker by tomorrow at this point. <laughs> oh, such a close game. Such a close game. Typhoid Mary getting us across the finish line here. Century into ship, the void across. Man. You've gone 64 reserves without a series four card. Is it only after series three completion? No, it's per group of 40. So again, if you want to break down on what per group of 40 means, it doesn't mean 40 in between. Check out the full breakdown here. That's a sick game. I'm glad we decided to put Sentry in this deck. He's been kind of impressive. I think it's unfair to call the people that are voting against McCarthy ultra conservative. It's a throwback to that meme where someone's like, they're bigoted and they hate me for my conservative views. It's like, you mean they hate you because you're fiscally conservative? They're like, no, you know the other views. And it's just like, oh, oh, we know. We know, we know what you mean when they say they hate you for being conservative. Oh. No, not fiscally conservative. Those other ones, you know. <laughs> Is your first collector reserve always a series four card? I don't believe so. Is there a party for fiscally conservative and socially liberal? So, to be to go on a political tangent for a short moment and maybe educate and inform, it is impossible to simultaneously be fiscally conservative and socially liberal because in order to be fiscally in order to be socially liberal you have to spend money to right the incredible wrongs social injustices have done 
in our society over the many hundreds of years. Fiscal, fiscal policy and social policy goes hand in hand. You can't, you can't detach them from one another. They are, they are intertwined. She's a wonderful draw here. That's Red Skull. Sounds great. We go Viper into Zabu into Snap. He snapped. We get to go Shang Chi's you here. Play a demon, play an enchantress just in case they play in a tuma. Do we read Zola and Shang Chi Luke's bar? Ooh, that's a fun thought, actually. Thanks, Blaze Pascal. Yeah, I think I like that, actually. This is this is a this is a clutch line because I don't really need more power in the middle, right? Because if if we win here, we win here. Yes, the faster video sigil. I'm glad we decided to try this. This has felt pretty good. Honestly, I feel like I should probably put Daredevil in more of these Zabu decks. Why did the opposing Captain Marvel move if she didn't win the game? So, Captain Marvel moves to win you a location if she can because you get 10 season pass experience per location you win. So if she can move to give you 10 season pass experience, she will because she's a pal. Uh, is Captain Marvel worth buying in the shop? I think if you like the idea of Captain Marvel, she's a plenty playable card. Thanks for the sub gift. Whoever did that anonymously, appreciate you. Kitty Cat's a nice draw. In my opinion, what's the number one card to buy in the token shop? In my opinion, the number one card to buy in the token shop varies heavily depending on what your collection looks like. I want to hold Absorbing Man just in case. Um, this Jubilee is like big Gamba. 
She can hit Viper or Professor X. Here is the problem. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not a coward, so we're going to play her. But I'm trying to decide if I want to play her here or play her in the middle. I think, and I, I don't want to play her on the right because she could also hit Sentry. All right, please don't give away my Zabu. All right, it's fine. I'm done with him. You can give away the Zabu. I don't want to play with you anymore. And then because I am a brave man chat, we snap the we snap the professor on the right here for sure. No! Wait. Wait a minute. Okay, everything worked out better than expected. Everything worked out better than expected. You know, it's been a while since we've done this yet. Hold on. Everybody bear with me. Breaker, breaker, give me the news. I am a little bit scared of you. Only an Odin. Only an Odin. Victory. You don't have Sentry, do you put in Hobgoblin or Crossbones? I think if I didn't have Sentry, um, I would probably... Uh, cut Sentry and Professor X, and I would play Rescue and Mysterio. I think is what I would do. We originally had that in here, and then I swapped it for Sentry, and that's been good. No, Viper's still good with HUD, and Viper's fine with Mysterio. A ton of great fours here, but we've got Hood into Viper the Hood into uh, Zabu on the Citadel. If someone at home, if someone asks about playing this deck without Zabu, I agree with the commenter that this deck without Zabu is just a different deck. And if you look up on my YouTube channel, there's actually a budget Daredevil deck up there. If you want to see how I would approach Daredevil without Zabu. Hey, he's playing the one in 40 rule again. One per one chest in each group of 40 has a series four card in it. And if you want a deeper breakdown on that, I cover that here. We're just vibing, says a man about to be enchantressed. Mjolnir, to me! Uh, yellow jacket, big mistake. What are my thoughts on using Goose to protect Zabu? Um, I think it makes your deck awkward in the games where you don't draw Zabu.
Uh, we win, right? Good shot. Good shot. Thank you, Sentry. Appreciate you. Victory. Is it a bug that Absorbing Man doesn't trigger if he's pulled by Jubilee? More of a feature. So your card in Marvel Snap doesn't count as fully having been played until all of its on-reveal effects finish. So technically, Absorbing Man comes into play off of Jubilee while she's still resolving. So the card you played before Absorbing Man coming in is still the one before Jubilee. It is a little counterintuitive, though, and it probably would be better for the game if they changed it. But from, like, a technical rules standpoint, it's working as intended. I'm also, I'm also a pretty big proponent of if something's working as intended but is very unintuitive, it's probably worth changing. That's a good one to know about for later. What if we do this and just punt the flooding? And then we Professor X one of these to lock it up next turn. Chavez into Mojo while we have Shang-Chi is a real good beat for us. They don't have armor this is good for us we'll get to go professor x here and then we'll go oh actually even if they have armor we have enchantress right oh you want to pull whatever i'm playing into the middle sure thing let's lock this one down shall we good chat good chat Long leader abuser. Have a good night. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. But Jesus fish, thank you for the five sub gifts. Appreciate that. Sock man, have you seen the fear itself variant for absorbing man? I don't think I've seen it, no. Not offhand anyways. All right, we're finally making some climate progress today. All right, chat, after this next game, we're going to take our top of the hour ad break. I need to run to the restroom anyway, so that's perfect. Maybe stretch your legs and stuff. Get a drink. <laughs> All right, sometimes they're quick. I'm going to hit 90 seconds because I need to step away to use the bathroom anyways. Stand up if you've been sitting, chat. BRB.
Daredevil, Zabu, Snap. This is my favorite Zabu deck so far. I think the Hawk Zabu is my favorite. We're just trying this one for the first time today. Let's, you know, poking at different things. Well, Finder, thanks for the prime. Appreciate everybody that stuck through the ad break. We're doing those once an hour. I promise we'll never do them over the gameplay. Farming cubes on up the ladder. Slow and steady. One Zabu in the opener, one cube gained. Eric with a K, thanks for the prime. Oh, well, Finder, let me see what happens. Uh, I don't know. You see, chat, we're not just snapping early to be a bully. We're just snapping our hands that are good. Snap back on the Eternity Rage into Viper. Kick your thing over. These two, these two draws were really good here. Yeah, and now I get to Spider-Man into Absorbing Man, Spider-Man plus a Demon. are good sub for Sentry. I think you need to build the deck a little different with Sentry. I think if I was missing Sentry, I'd probably cut Sentry and Professor X and play Mysterio and Rescue. All right, so we're absorbing Manning here. The question is, do I want to play Demon this turn or do I want to play Demon next turn? The upside to not playing Demon this turn is I won't have priority going into next turn, meaning I can Enchantress a Hawk here, which I think is ideal. I think I, I think I decline. Oh, is that game winning? That might be game winning. Huh? demon the previous turn it would have ended up here and then we would have been able to enchantress plus devil here but i think we end up losing that still in most situations right because i would have been enchantress devil is uh seven nine here and we're only up by four over here oh good i can get spider-man to red that's nice not if they if they go hawk mystique we'd win, but not if they play any combination of not Hawk Mystique things, right? I think playing Jessica Jones in a deck where I don't have a way to get extra power into or out of her path is not great. No, chat, the, the devil would have been pulled to the right by the arrow there. The demon. The demon would have ended up on the right side. Unless you're saying in that game I could have stayed in the in there. I don't think we can stay there. I could have played Demon plus Enchantress for 13 in the middle, but we were down by so much, I don't think we win the tiebreaker in that instance.
Just went to snap again when I drew the carnage with the sentry. <laughs> Okay, so this is Zabu into Enchantress, their Ant-Man and Quinjet. Although I guess I don't have to do that right away. Our best draw next year is probably Viper. Man, this card looks great with the red border, huh? Beautiful piece of art. No, I don't want to Zabu the big house because I want to Enchantress this group of things. Need to cut them off these Quinjets before the Moon Girl happens here. Well, that was the perfect draw. The season pass is the best ratio of stuff to money you will get in Marvel Snap. As for is it worth buying, the question is, did you feel like spending $10 on Marvel Snap? If yes, start with the season pass. Woggers! It would be a damn shame if something were to happen to Woggers, Jet. If the pro bundle price is less than... If the pro bundle price is less than 8,000 gold, it is a good... It is a good deal. The season is now five weeks long. Yes, there are four five-week seasons over the course of the year because the year is 52 weeks. All right, I think we call that a scar diff in the biz, Chip. Yeah, we don't we won't know that yet, Kraken. We don't we don't know the details on the bundle, chat. Honestly, I wish rather than taking the Korean post down, anybody out there at second dinner, if you are listening, rather than having all this baseless speculation around, I would implore you, put together English in your translated patch notes and just get them up everywhere. I know I know that the patch isn't coming for up to a week. But you can't take the pee out of the pool. Once the information is on the internet, you need to just like make it available. Just post them up. Yeah, we tried a zombie surfer list yesterday and it felt exactly as clunky as it sounds. I was not, not happy or excited about it. I drink the whole pool. Shut the internet down, chat. Patch notes went up early. Won't Viper app in 2x? Yeah, but the demon's not in play yet. She won't donate a face down card.
I agree that so far all of the good Zabu decks seem like they want series four and five cards. I don't think this card is optional in, in any optimal Zabu deck. I think at a minimum, you really need this card for Zabu. I would not be surprised if there's a good Zabu deck that doesn't have Sentry or Shuri or Hawk in it, but you definitely, you basically play Absorbing Man in every Zabu deck. It's so good. Uh, I think Zoo Zabu isn't really worth exploring until Shauna exists, and then it's also another Zabu deck that needs a Series 5 card. Am I vipering across this ninja or am I waiting to get the sentry? I think I'm just vipering across the ninja and snapping them. Do you think this game would be better or worse with mulligans? You can already mulligan in Marvel Snapchat. You click this red button right here and then you click this blue button. You mulligan for the low, low price of one cube. This could bite us here, but I think they're probably gonna play to the lockjaw, right? tried to destroy Professor X. Yeah, the poker aspects of Snap are great. Big agree. I think I'm playing Zabu and then just vibing here. Yes, if you fill the lane, Sentry does not put the minus eight in, is correct. For the Zoomers at home, I was not dabbing, that was a sneeze. I am not one of you, I apologize. Liar. <laughs> New to the stream, why is he talking like that? Because that's how my voice sounds. There's a whole big scary world out there full of people that look and sound and speak differently from you at home. Someday, someday you will crawl out of your mother's basement and realize that. Cosmo's annoying. I think this is like Sentry here into Cheese Professor X middle. Then we just like hope to win New York.
To the people that ask, why is my voice different than in my video titles on YouTube intro, I would encourage you to think back to all of the times people have needled me and asked of me why my voice sounds the way it does while I stream. And I think you'll understand why I make an effort to make my voice sound different in YouTube video intros. The spookiest of Sarah's, correct. Could have been a cheating bot. Probably. I don't think you can get the same. I don't think you get the same cheating bot two games in a row. So probably, probably, probably a little bit of a spooky environment we're working in. Mystique Professor X. <clears throat> you can. I am fairly clear when I speak and enunciate myself well. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. Water the flower behind me. Chat, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. It's just a thing of sticks because I can't be bothered to water it. Way too long to snap. Honestly, I was probably leaving at any point, but it's probably fair. I don't think they're getting a second cube out of me for that game. Probably a leech leader player if I had to guess based on the cards we saw last game in this game Big leech leader energy. Yeah, this is the same opponent Absorbing Man and Spider-Man backed up by Shang-Chi take a dub here. <laughs> Osno and Goose. This is a surfer deck on the opponent's side. <clears throat> a 
Well, if they're a surfer deck, they should just be done, right? Back with Snap. Love that you don't lie about X or Y deck is broken tier zero infinite. Thanks for the YouTube deck guides. Thanks for coming back, Nightwings. Good to see the old regulars around again. Any reason not to snap after the devil? Ah, uh, I mean, they probably just leave. You're right. I should snap at least going into the devil turn. Might honestly be right to snap on four. Once I had the double Spider-Man set up. Double spider manning people is definitely big 2 QB and D energy. I agree with that. God, this variant just looks so good. The more we upgrade it, chip, I'm very, I'm very into our variant. Understood the interface. Doing well, Corbin. Enjoying the new season, climbing back up. Make a decent progress for 85 after just a couple of days. Shuri Zero Zabu. We played uh, some Shuri Zabu the other day. I think it's quite reasonable. snap now <clears throat> i have daredevil here and then i have like hood carnage here and then we have spider-man and x and honestly one of the things that feels really good about this deck is like looking at hands like this right where i like look at my hand and there's no zabu in sight and it's like oh this hand is good and i can snap here Victory. so i have a series four and five buyer guide up now but i'm gonna be posting an updated and updated, I think I'm gonna do like a monthly winners and losers video update where I cover cards that I like, um, cards that have gotten better or worse depending on how the metagame has shifted based on new cards that have been added. What's the best advice for a newbie? The number one piece of advice I have for anybody starting new in Snap is that you're going to lose cube and rank while you learn the game. And you should just accept that you're going to have to take your licks while you learn while you learn your way around. Learning when to snap and when to retreat is a really tough skill to master. And it's one that you will get better at the more you play and the more you understand the games you're playing into. Tokyo Whirlwind with the Whirlwind of Sub-Gifties. Thank you for that. Ooh, so them hooding here as well is actually bad for us because it means they're likely to be a carnage deck, right? Got blocked, yeah. Rough. demon in the middle and then we'll try and set the double spider up for turn five i absolutely love that this deck can play through wave it's it's actually just one of my favorite things about it the death wave deck is so obnoxious that it's great that you just get to be like and we're still playing a game here friendly neighborhood spider-man
And now I get to go Shang-Chi into Daredevil into Sentry. Right, this is nine, and then we have uh, more than nine, 10 here. Use the Doctor Doom, I guess, with this line. Maybe I'm supposed to play Sentry to the left to play around Doctor Doom. Leader, if they play Leader, it's actually really funny here because the Leader will give them a minus eight on the left. Oh, Arrow could get us. Is that true? Yeah, I, I should I should play Sentry left to play around Arrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good call. Sentry left beats Arrow and Leader. Oh, we're good though because of the Baxter bonus, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've read about the Baxter bonus keeping us in here. Yeah, I think I think it's technically right to play Sentry left there, right? I think so. It plays around Doctor Doom and other things too. Chat, I looked away at my other screen. What other Sokovia discard? Yeah, I need my unfair Twitch chat advantage. Someone, someone be my deck tracker, please. They discarded Killmonger. That's actually good for us, huh? Killmonger? What? What are they playing with Sinister, Sinister, Mr. Sinister Killmonger? Surfer? Surfer Patriot. Yes, that's uh, that's good. Okay, serve for Patriot. Sentry loves the bar on the right. Yep. I um, I probably should have snapped the Viper play. Honestly. Is everybody freaking out today? By the way, it is just. Absolutely mind blowing that there are almost 4,000 people in here. My little tracker says we've had over three, almost 300 new follows today. For people that are new to the channel and not familiar with me, my name is Jeff Hoagland. I stream full time here on Twitch while also making content on YouTube as well. I've been streaming for over 10 years, doing it as a full time job for the last five now. I've always focused on card games and strategy games, but Marvel Snap has been my uh, my addiction since it released. Honestly, since before that, even I've been playing for six or seven months since the start of the closed beta. The game is great. You can find me here Monday through Friday from about 9 a.m. Central until about 5 or 6 p.m. Central. For those of you that are not in the U.S. and you wonder about time zones, currently about th almost three o'clock Central. I don't want to daredevil into the Hellfire Club because ideally I want a Viper or Carnage here potentially. So let's play on the left. Ooh, Hala is a piece of candy for Sentry, too. We snap. After watching you play Magic for a long time, happy to see you become successful post-Magic. Thanks, Shibby. Feels good to be out from under Watsi and Magic, for sure. Sentry middle. The question is, do I want to play Drax towards the left? 
It might even be right to sit on Drax for now. And just chill. Although I won't have energy to play out Demon, Drax, Absorb... Excuse me, Absorb Man and another four on the last turn. I kind of want to set up to be able to Professor X the center, potentially. I don't want to play the Demon out yet because Nova means they're probably a Killmonger deck. I just don't know that I want to commit Drax to the mid. Oh, they're worried about Hala. Sure, no, we're punting that, friendo. Hey, Splinter, thanks for the thanks for the sub. Appreciate the support. All right, and then our friend Daredevil here gives us perfect information to lock them out with Spider-Man and Absorbing Man. Pivot. Pivot. Yes, yes, yes. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. What's up, bro? Patriot Surfer in chat recently was that a question? Uh, Patriot Surfer is a deck in Marvel Snap. I am a combination Surfer Patriot deck. They go up to. Uh, 10 here when the Nova breaks. This puts me to 9, 12. We do lose to Doctor Doom here, but I think I'm fine betting two cubes on Doctor Doom. Lose to Claw as well, I suppose. Claws could be a card they're playing. I like Claw. New Year's Project. Thanks for the Prime for the second month. Someone asked, do I plan to go back to doing Unite stuff when their competitive scene starts back up? Um, no strict plans. Snap, snap is my focus as long as metrics are good and I'm having fun. Unite, Unite was a ton of fun and it was awesome to get to do their world's broadcast in London, but it was like very much just a side project for me. Victory. Like going, going to London, even with what they paid me, uh, was uh, a money losing trip for me. Definitely went because of the experience. It was fun. I don't regret going. My wife and I had a really good time. It was fun exploring the city with uh, Zoinks and Snacks and Spriggles. the kids go to uh they did not we had a my wife had an entire spreadsheet full of sitters it takes uh takes a village as they say all right well we're gonna do this and then we're gonna draw a carnage next turn and everything's gonna be great i believe I would like to give a shout out to my opponent for not snapping me. They probably could have taken one more of my cubes here. Well, what if they don't snap? If they don't snap here, there's a world where Carnage here maybe wins me the game, right? If, if they're not snapping, I'll, I'll buy I'll buy one more card draw for a dollar. So, I get to go Carnage plus Sentry here, and then I have 6 power Carnage here, 10 power Carnage here, 8 power Sentry on each. That is the level 50 Zabu chat. Our opponent is someone who bought out the season pass. They are a fellow large sea creature.
long hazmat, absorbing me in the hazmat, dark hawk. My deck's got five cards in it. I think, I think this is fine to stay in for, right? I think, I think there's a chance we win this. Do I, do I snap them? No chat, I want to eat the demon. So I want, I want to be able to play two, sorry, I want to be able to play two things here, right? I think I want to eat the demon. Uh, that might be wrong. I think I want to eat the demon though. It might be right to snap them here, yeah. I guess we probably don't have two plays to make here though, right? Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to leave the demon on the left, so probably can only play one card. Oh my god. Holy crap. Wow. I think we needed the snap last turn. I don't think I think snapping here is wrong and we'll chase out a cube. I think I think we lose we lose a cube here if we snap. They're leaving anyways. Yeah, I should have I should have trusted. We should have Yeah. We should have snapped when we saw the hazmat and the absorbing man. If my opponent would have snapped on after the green goblin turn or going into it, I would have left here. I, we needed to draw Carnage, and I didn't have it. They, they could have pushed us out, and they didn't. That was a good gamer for you. Uh, green. I need one pretty kitty, please. One of your prettiest kitties, please. Well, I got my pretty kitty wish, but we're losing our hands. I'm gonna snap back. Thank our the cat the cat makes the straw very good, huh? What would you consider to be a good concede percentage? So far this season, while I'm playing kind of sweaty and trying to play well, I have a 33% concede rate. We've been gotcha. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We, if we draw Absorbing Man, Absorbing Man might be able to do some work here in the center. Absorbing Absorbing Man to pair with the Spider-Man could maybe get us going. I guess we could also theoretically peel Shang for the left. Am I crazy or was that a viper there momentarily? Okay. All right, one in five. That is not the Shang-Chi we needed for Christmas chip. We needed you last turn, bud. Although I guess with the vision we would have gotten there the other way, right? Viper doesn't exist. I was like, wait, is that my Viper? Because it was my it was my artwork Viper too. Ooh, I have enough boosters to split the hood again, chip.
Okay, let's add a comment that I will give my fourth full thoughts on the leak on YouTube tonight. Am I allowed to split that hood? No, I don't think I'm upgrading him. He's kind of perfect yet. I think those boosters are just living there forever. I'm gonna play the demon into the eternity range. Prevent the rock from getting in there. Um, I think I'm not supposed to do this, right? I think we're just like saving it to pair with the sentry. They have one of our four drops. Seven on the left, and we're up uh, ten on the right. We're losing to Magneto. We beat leader, though. We're leaving. We, we beat leader, we lose to Magneto. So, Chad, it doesn't matter that they can't pull with Professor X. If I, um, if they Magneto, the 12 points gets us, Chad, because they're winning the middle. We're only up 10 here, and they're only up. If they Magnetoed here and we X'd here, we would tie. But if they, if they all, they always Magneto left, right? Because they're only down seven here. I could get plus four here from Drax, but then I'm still down by one. But they didn't have it. They probably were just a leader abuser. You think Zabu without absorbing that would look like? Unplayable. Like, I think this. I think the Zabu bare minimum is uh is absorbing man. I think I think you need absorbing man Spider-Man. When I when I add a Zabu packages to the packages sheet, it's gonna be Spider-Man absorbing man Zabu, is my plan. I think you could probably get away with something pretty reasonable, like without Sentry and without Shuri and without Hawk, but So this Triskelion is actually just eating our first three draws. Feels bad, man. Have your cube. For what it's worth, I think absorb I think with Zabu being added to the game, absorbing man's a higher priority card than best. Oh, you know, it's probably right to play hood to the right, actually, because of Carnage. Because if I draw a sentry. I could, could do that there.
I don't know. I think it's also worth noting, chat, that you should acknowledge I'm also doing the hyperbolic card game player thing, and when I say something is unplayable without it, you can still play games and win games with it. When I say, when I say unplayable, what I mean is inoptimal. And maybe, maybe you know that, but also maybe you don't. Man, the left. No, they actually come and delete Zabu off your computer if you don't have Absorbing Man. Yep. Gotta go, right? Victory. Thank you, Spider Man. Kitty, 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 very, very linear and makes good, 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 nice big numbers. All right, and then we get to Professor X wherever they don't play their Shuri thing, and then we get to Shang-Chi their Shuri thing. for tiebreaker. Yeah, we got my Cosmo armor. Fully expecting toxic emoting. Good play. The cute, the cute thing is, if we'd have had Zabu that game, we'd have beaten the armor, right? Because you get to Enchantress and uh, and Shang Chi at the same time. Kitty, 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 kitty. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. What is the interaction between Wave and Zabu? Your four cost things still cost two, but nothing else gets cost reduced. Yep. Yeah. 
Good shot. Patriot means they can't uh, they can't get rid of the squirrel in the space throne. You're running Chavez and Domino help you get Zabu more. So Chavez makes you four and a half percent more likely to have Zabu on curve. Domino does the opposite though. Domino actually makes you less likely to have Zabu on curve. Steve? My hand is strong enough to snap off of just Zabu here. Really, really need like a Viper or Carnage to uh, have this work out a little better. Chantressing the Mr. Fantastic and then just chilling here for the time being. Link third Killmonger deck. Maybe we play the... Well, I guess I get to play Demon next turn, right? Mm, I might draw Professor X. That makes playing Demon less good. I don't want to play Demon to the right. That's awkward. I don't want to play Demon to the right because if we draw Viper, I want to be able to use Sentry. Although the, the Cosmo actually means I can uh, Sentry the center and not get the downside, right? We have Carnage now, though. Afternoon, beer team. Claw. The shame this isn't Viper. They're just dead to Onslaught here. Can I beat Spectrum? We also die to Spectrum. All right, time to go. I'm gonna play Hazmat and Luke Cage. Do you have any decks to recommend? Yeah, you can find a Hazmat control list up on my YouTube. Look for the build that has Ironheart in it in the playlist. And these are a set of locations. Holy crap. bit of column A, a little bit of column B, do you mean? I think this is Zabu into Warrior Falls, and then Sentry Viper over Sentry Viper. Well, I guess this also means I can't play anything into here next turn. I don't know. Those are a real wonky set of locations. Yeah, we tried out a hazmat deck with Zub when I wasn't a huge fan of it. 
don't plan to work on it anymore. Let's find locations are bad for us anyways. Gamba, 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 Gamba. Snap. Victory. All right. Uh, I'm using the Steam version of Snap. I use uh, Blue Stack, so I need to log in and use the inbox though, because the inbox is broken in the Steam version currently. version better than the Android version are about the same. The Steam version is very feature incomplete. It's missing things like the inbox and the news section of the game, but otherwise it tends to run smoother than the emulator version does on the PC in my experience. We're having some screen tearing issues with the Android emulator is why I ended up switching. Do I run win and loss streaks in this game? No, not at all. Marvel Snap isn't like other card games, chat. Retreating isn't like losing a game. It's a tactical fold in a game where your hand was poorly positioned. Yeah, interesting patch note was that this uh, location is being downgraded to appear less frequently. Interesting note. God's Drax wins this, Don Zero. As a nullified storm, for those of you at home wondering. Hey, it's wrong to play the dragster. I'm supposed to tee up something else this turn. We'll probably be losing priority going into the final turn, so maybe Shang-Chi can get us a win, but we'll see. Fluffy Swaggins, thank you for the brand new Prime, by the way. Mr. Photon, did I miss your 46 months? I feel like I did. If I did, I'm sorry and thank you. If I didn't, thanks again. Afternoon hit streak. I don't think we can win though. Jack Deluxe, thank you for the brand new prime. I assume they have a big play in their staying, but we'll press the time wasting button for a second. Thanks, it's true. Yeah, I assume they're Magneto. And they stayed in, we lost a cube. You watch the video and you don't understand if you're supposed to save it up or use it on missions. The answer is it's... <laughs> Assuming we get bundles similar to what we've had in the past, it's marginally faster to save it for big bundles, but there's also no guarantee that we're gonna continue getting bundles like those. And it's also only marginally faster. So my general advice, as with all things Marvel Snap is, do the thing that sparks joy for you. 
Is super flow more beneficial for them or me? Probably more beneficial for me, right? All of the Leech Leader decks have basically decided that Scorpion's the best on-curve thing they can be doing. So, Scorpion's been seeing a ton of play, yeah. Beating Miss Jones. Oh, snap. A snap on the zombie daredevil, I think, on four. Chat, after this game, we'll have our regularly scheduled ad break. Take 60 seconds to stretch out, walk around, and those of you that get it won't miss any gameplay. Appreciate everybody hanging out today. Immortal, thank you for the 58 months. Okay, so the Nightcrawler play here actually lets us know that I should go ahead and just play Sentry out because we're going to be losing the right. I, I have never once said that buying Series 3 cards helps you progress faster. Do ads affect viewership or extra subs? Um... Some people leave when I hit an ad roll, is definitely the case. Regardless of how minimally disruptive you make them, some people are just like, never want to have that experience. That's their call. It's probably accurate to say that some amount of people sub who wouldn't because they don't want to see ads ever. I don't know what this is, we know that's a kingpin. Spider-Man to lock up the left. We're losing the right by a lot, so we have to win the middle. I'm putting 13 into play here. They have six plus a three drop. Probably like 10-ish. I don't have priority. Shang-Chi beat something big. I'm gonna stay with Shang-Chi here. I think we're good, right? Even the left to win the center? Solid. Yeah, I'm planning to stream till 5 or 6 o'clock today at least, Victor. We'll see. We'll make guesses when we get closer there. See you in 60 seconds, not subs. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting value add proposition, KM. I think, I think running too many ads costs you perspective people that would have stayed around and supported, but just like left because of ad volume. So, so far, anecdotally, doing the one minute of ads per hour, I don't think the, the stats have looked okay for the first couple of days, but it's also only the third day doing it, so. Hey, Jackson Burr, thank you for the brand new Prime. Does Dracula get stats from Professor X? It does, yeah. So, Professor X just stops things from being destroyed or moving in and out. It doesn't stop stat modifiers from happening inside of that path.
Let's send me a couple of these on a promo thing a while back. They have fun designs. Hey, let's do it. I was planning to change decks more, but I'm kind of I'm kind of vibing with what this deck is doing, chat. So I think we're chilling on it for a little bit. How well do you remember names from those that sub or are active in chat? Um, the people that are here for a good long while, they start to I start to pick up on. There's give, there's give and take though. My brain, my brain only has so much space in it. Like Immortal, they've been hanging out for almost five years. Any chance I would rate a deck? No, I don't do deck reviews on stream. Sometimes, sometimes we do them for donations, but kind of just ladder in, ladder in for the next few days. We'll see where we'll see where we end up rank rank wise at the end of the season. We might do a little bit more casual next week, even if we don't hit infinite. We'll see when the balance patch drops too. Remember the names of any of my students from when I was teaching? Not really. College college classes are just like single semester things, so it's kind of tough to get to know people too, too well. Poseidon, Poseidon Hate, thank you for the tier one. I do tend to remember the names of people that participate in the Discord server a little bit better though. So if you wanna, want a place to hang out with more Hoglandia, be sure to pop in there. Uh, are we just like big punting the, the right? <sighs> We're just punting the right. Yeah, Cosno on the right is super rude. What do you think of a Darkhawk negative Zabu list? Uh, we tried negative Zabu and it didn't, the list we tried didn't really feel that smooth. Could have definitely been a me problem though. Or snapping. I think there's a chance that Spider-Man left can win this game. I'm gonna stay. It feels like they're destroyer, right? Yeah, they're only they're only going to twelve here, right? I guess I guess we lose the spectrum. Oh wait, I have Enchantress, so we're good. I think we're good, right? If they destroy her here, we win. If they destroy her here, we win. If they spectrum, yeah, yeah, good to go, good to go. Enchantress is basically a Pokemon mood. Thanks for the Prime TRM. game pay to win depends on what you mean by pay to win you can spend money in marvel snap and it will help you gain progress faster but you also can't only spend money to gain progress the more money you spend the more you have to play in order for it to actually use the money that you purchase Can I sap them here? You're gonna be in a pretty good spot middle.
Here comes She-Hulk, you think so? You can't decide if I want to commit Daredevil here. I don't think I do. I think I'm gonna Daredevil right, and then we're gonna Spider-Man left. So they can't play there on the last turn. So they're gonna go to 16 here. And I'm gonna go to 13. And then if Spider-Man ends up there, we win. Actually, um, I should Professor X the right now, right? And then I just play mid and win the game, right? No, we should Professor X the right. This is plus six in the middle. It probably doesn't matter where we Professor X in all honesty. Victory. I for one am shocked that my opponent spent four resources for one power and wasn't in an advantageous position. Insanity. The best way to optimize Spider-Man. The best way to optimize Spider-Man was actually just added to Marvel Snap. Optimal Spider-Man needs Absorbing Man and Zabu, the new season pass card. Spider-Man. Spider-Man's kind of a uh, newly found all-star this season changes that have been added. Snap. We snap. We snap Zabu into Sentry Viper the negative eight into Kiln. Who is a good kitty? Yes you are. Yes you are. Oh hmm. We all shoot. They're clearly surfer, right? I don't even think it's about, it's not even about fear chat. I just don't think, I don't think we win here even if we kick it across, right? It's not even about gambling. It's, I don't, I don't think it's a, I don't think we win this path giving them a minus eight. They go to one and I have a three and then uh, they surfer and we still lose. So I don't, I don't think we're supposed to commit here. I think we're supposed to like sentry on the left. Then we can hood. It might be right to sentry, um, might be right to sentry mid even, honestly, just to let them know it's coming. I've gotten away with it too. If it wasn't for you kids and your meddling dark dimensions. Uh, we will not have priority. Okay, wait, will we? So, priority is determined by who is currently losing on board. They are up by 10, so I can't be up by more than 10 here. This puts me to 7. Oh, I already snapped. That's good for me. Um, so we Spider-Man, and then we Demon. There's no reason to Demon, actually, right? Maybe my play changes next turn. Oh, you know, I should just play an extra card here for tiebreakers, like Absorbing Man here or something. Yep, 
Yeah, I, sh I should have played an extra card here for breakers. Although breakers probably don't matter because we're about to go to negative 10 over here. Monka. <laughs> Is it priority random when you're each winning weight? No, it's who is currently winning the game. Uh, divide by four, they're at 18 here. Do we lose? No, we're up, we're up by a little bit, right? Enchantress, I choose you. Oh my God, we kill Angela too, Never mind. LOL. <laughs> Thanks for the cubes. This is quickly becoming my favorite zombie deck. Hey, thanks, Corsair. Yeah, sen Sentry has felt really good. Zabu letting you Sentry and Viper or Sentry and Carnage on turn four felt like the piece this card was missing. It always felt like too big of a tempo loss. In other decks, I played this in to work with it, but we've we've swung a number of games today, like the Sentry plus whatever on turn. Don't worry, I don't bite as their title with the Dracula avatar is Ace's attention to detail. I think if I didn't have Sentry, I would probably play Rescue in that slot. Is what what my gut feeling is. I would try I would try Rescue. Hey, KM Best, if you're still hanging out while I have you in chat. I'm curious on your opinion on the positioning of Death Wave post Zabu. Do you have any do you have any thoughts on that yet or is it still too early? I'm gonna play Mantis here and then we'll Sentry and then we'll Carnage clean this out. You think it's still very good? How's your how have your, your Zabu matchups felt? Have they felt reasonable? Also inexplicably good. Okay. You're just running leader. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, it's always leader, chat. Always leader. Am I playing Sarah? Maybe. Oh, their bass made it three and then they doubled it off of districts. I was like, what? Why is this only this big? My Shang-Chi is not, their wolf base not quite big enough. Not quite big enough to get through there. A hedge. Do I want to try and play center? I don't know if I want to try and play center. Can only make two plays here. This puts me up by eight over here. That might be okay. Sarah deck might not be able to beat me going up by eight. They also like have to have to beat eight over here, and they, they might not be expecting Carnage. I might just think I'm punting this lane. Oh, oh, fuck. I forgot about the bugle, chat. Jameson! Rip. That Shang-Chi's a menace, chat. Um, um, 
Hey, Ludarina, I am doing phenomenal. Thank you for the 40 months and welcome back. Ooh, piece of candy. Is this snappable? Hood into Viper, Spider Man into Professor? I think so. Yeah, I think Sarah Disruption with Zombies probably okay. We played something close to that without it. It played a lot of fours. Spider-Man the right into, into Professor X, I think. I'll play Demon left just to hedge all the locations, I think. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. This is a fun interaction as well. Professor X locking down the right stops Sentry from stops Sentry from being able to get in there. Now, this is a touch unfortunate. I have priority here, but Carnage plus Sentry is 14 stats, right? Is that better than Drax plus Sentry? Drax plus Sentry is 16. So this is, this is better, right? Oh, I could also just sentry left. Um, what happens if they, no, they can't mystique anymore. If they rock slide, I could lose the left. What is, what does this lose to you? Probably nothing. This is plus 12, we go to 20. They already played Korg. Uh, they could rock slide plus absorbing man, but that's only nine and then carnage wins. The carnage beats rock slide absorbing man. Yeah, because even if they even if they had absorbing man here, they would have gone to twenty two here, but we would have been six to five. Yeah, really sweet game. Is this Zabu deck better than the Dark Arc variant? I have no idea. Attacking board space seems good in these matchups. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that statement. Viper, Viper, Viper is one of my favorite cards, Chat. She's so great. Are there any good decks with Sarah and without Psylocke? Yeah, Crichton, if you check out my YouTube channel, um, Sarah is actually one of the cards I've done an ultimate deck guide for. So you'll find budget and a range of other lists in that video, breaking her down. Chilling for now, Chip. Ha! Uh. 
Okay. Oh, snap. We snap here. We'll sentry this turn in the middle, and then we'll Professor X the left. I mean, I kind of wanted to Viper the thing across, but it's not having to worry about it also works. Monka She-Hulk, chat. I definitely did not plan to... I didn't start streaming on Twitch intending to be successful at it. I started streaming on Twitch because I like playing video games. I was just... I just... I didn't say the words out loud. But I thought to myself, I just need a little bit of Shang Cheese now. Am I supposed to play the hood out? Probably. Can go either way. I think this wins enough for the time to stay for two. They have priority. Opponent snapped. Um, I know it's frustrating and I fucking hate this card jet. Carnage beat leader. Carnage, carnage beat leader. If I would have gone carnage Shang-Chi, their carnage would have eaten leader and been four power and we'd have had five. The nerf, the nerf basically doesn't matter chat. Taking one power away from this card, it creates like a very small number of edge cases where it wins now, but it doesn't win in the future. Oh, they would have had the Shang-Chi too. No, never mind. Yeah, we're just dead. Yeah, fuck leader. I I am the the, the nerf is basically a non-change. The, ner the nerf is basically a non It is, correct. Taking one power away from Galactus doesn't change shit. I'm pretty sure the Galactus one is a buff. Yeah, it's a buff to it if they want to try it negative. Why, why, why do we think the Galactus nerf? For people in chat that are coming here saying nerfs, leaks, exclamation point patch in tent to get a. Get an example of the upcoming expected changes. Piece of Schmidt. Thank you for the prime. It's a great name. Has a higher chance of punting priority. Oh. Oh, yeah, it is a buff, isn't it? God, that's funny. And by funny, I mean, God damn it. We're dead here. They just got to moon girl their hands. Escaped. That's so atrocious. I, I didn't even think about that that deck, that that deck doesn't want priority. Huh. What's going on? We got, thank you for the prime. Afternoon. Null is very busted without priority. You are not wrong. 
I'm gonna play Hood in the middle. We're gonna be saving Viper for Sentry though, so hopefully we find a Carnage. Enchantress Zabu. The damage is already done at that point, dear Wokes. I don't know if I can snap this necessarily because... Well, I'm glad we didn't snap it too aggressively. Um... Carnage makes our sentry thing a little bit less good. Uh, so, I think there's a chance that the balance folks at second dinner are of the opinion that... There's a real chance that their balance folks are of the opinion that um, changes with Zabu and stuff will be enough to keep leader in check. And may maybe they're right. It still just feels real bad to play against. I don't know. Dark Darkhawk being good is bad for leader is, is an accurate statement. It just kind of goes back to telling people they should play a different deck to be better against leader kind of sucks. Oh, and we got Cosmo out of the right. I completely agree with that sentiment and it's something I plan to hit on when I do a full review of the patch later. These small changes in this patch definitely feel like uh, we're making a small number of minor changes after the holidays because we know something needs to be done. What does this lose to? If they le do we lose to leader? If they leader, they have plus 12 and I'm only adding 11. I should reorder these to beat leader. If I go like this and they leader, they go to 13 and I go to eight. Oh, they can't leader the big house either. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And they have Cosmo preventing the leader here. I should Enchantress before I Shang-Chi just in case they have something like armor. I should snap them back here, actually. This is I, I I gave up keeps here. I should snap them back. They're super dead. Yes. Victory. Ill Eagle, thank you for <laughs> Ill Eagle. Thank you for the prime. Ooh, I almost have enough boosties to split my Viper again. Getting close to an ink or gold split on her. Like to have a pretty version of that card for sure. About to get killmongered. I have a picture of my gaming monitor layout somewhere. struggle to push it to staff this, but we're feeling okay. Okay, 
four power Deadpool in their hands. steel middle here. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Worry about Arnim Zola, maybe? Happy here is snapping. My fingers are sore, of course. That might be why I can't reach rank 50. What's going on, Zimbot? Uh, I think having priority here probably means we're dead, right? Deal. They think Angel is good, or they just want to use this sick variant. Why not both? Fair. Is there a difference on my end between a regular sub and Amazon Prime sub? There is not. I get the exact same amount of exact same amount of support. I'm gonna do the obvious Daredevil snap because they're leaving once the Professor X flips up anyways. This is my last chance to maybe get a second cube. I might have been right to snap earlier, but there was also a chance that like full played out into this right side, and then we were in trouble. Your name pop up with a picture on Mojo World. It did, yeah. Yeah, Mojo World shows the, the player name who's winning there every time someone starts winning. It's a fun, fun system. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. It's a good kitty. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Snap. What a snap. I've got Carnage Sentry, and I've got Absorbing Man Spider Man. I don't know that we we will, but I'm gonna leave myself the option 
to Absorbing Man Carnage to clear this out over here next turn. And we could just be double Spider-Manning. We get to we get some information here with the Daredevil. It could be right to double Spider-Man depending on what they do. But I wanna I wanna leave myself the flexibility to absorbing man carnage. Arrowing the location I have three cards in is a bold strategy. I, I think we just do this, right, chat? Because they're gonna be they're gonna be 13 here and I'm going to 14. Listen, chat. Viper and I go way back. She's really good at flipping coins when I ask her to. You just you just gotta believe, okay? Marka Agatha from the Triskelion chat. One-sided ego is not fair. What one, one-sided ego is not fair. All right, go left. Okay, maybe maybe Agatha knows what she's doing. She yeah. maybe she knows. I I believe Agatha's not gonna play anything else in Oscorp Tower. Copium. She's turning off our Zabu, but also like, we hit the Ant-Man too, okay? There's no way we win middle after a Shuri, right? You try, you tried, Agatha. You tried. I'm not giving up another cube. We're, we're trying to climb here. Escaped. Much less the three more cubes chat wants me to give up. If they hadn't shuri chat, I could maybe copium into the ten in the center. Three more cubes, chat wanted you to snap back and lose eight. That's true. That's true. Listen, chat, we always snap the Professor X gamble off of Project Pegasus. Professor X roulette, best roulette. A 
SPB. Thanks for dropping that prime for the second month. Welcome back. Yeah, hopefully Professor X didn't stumble drunkenly into the bar with no name. Although Baxter building becomes important now, right? Because they can, they can tie me on the right. Watch it be the sewer. All right, we're open to draw Spider-Man so we can double spider this Baxter building. If you have Viper in your deck with your hood, I think you should always play your hood into un unknown face down locations because playing hood into any of the negative power locations as well as bar with no name and Oscorp tower is positive EV. And that's actually the perfect draw because it means if they just sit here and soak on Sunspot, we could win. EV is expected value. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Oops, I did it again. I webbed up your card. Dee -dee 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 -beep -beep -bee -dee 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 Look at the smile on this man's face, Chet. He knows exactly what he is about to do. He knows, he knows exactly what he is about to do. Now, it is worth noting that we do lose to, we do lose to uh, Arrow here. <laughs> we didn't need to eat the leader there, but it felt fucking great anyways, okay? 0% necessary, 100% satisfying. Alright, we have enough cubes to split cubes. We have enough uh, boosters to split Angel or blah, whatever her name is. Ooh, that's a fun variant. I have a Maria Hill variant. I don't have enough credits to split Viper right now. I have to wait till tonight. Only have uh, 375 credits. Four hundred tokens. How close are we to Bass? Nineteen hundred. Getting there. Slow and slow and steady. All right, chat, we actually are coming up on an ad roll. So non-subs, I will see you in 60 seconds. We'll wait till after it to start the ad break. I will say having to do something once an hour is reminding me to sit and stand more regularly, which is kind of nice. I'm like, I'm actually splitting my stream time 50-50 sitting and standing. We stood for an hour, now we sit for an hour. I have all the cards. I'm missing Bast and Super Scroll. Ones that currently escape me. The 12,000 credit bundle. If everybody's gonna be able to buy that, that'll help me. Help me get close.
How do you win in a control versus control match from other games? You want to be as greedy as possible. So the answer to that question is very different match to match because of the location variance, right? Like what is what is right to play for it changes a lot. Um, this I if if you ask me right now, I'll say this is my favorite Zabu deck, but it also has some recency bias. Don't forget about Orca. Orca I will get just from opening reserves. In fact, the, the 12,000 credits will probably get me Orca off the collection level track. Is most, most likely the case. Can you play Ebony Maw with Sauron after turn three? That's my assumption, Watch Resme. That's what, that's what it reads as. So from Death Wave to Zabu deck, and I've only played against Destroy deck since. That can't be a coincidence. I promise you it is. Yes, the early patch notes mentioned a 12,000 credit bundle. It did not mention any details about pricing yet, though. If you want an off-the-cuff number, so long as the upcoming bundle costs less than 8,000 gold, it will be a reasonable pickup compared to buying gold directly. But again, we don't know that. It's speculation at this point. My hand's kind of poop, chat. I don't have Viper or Cartage or Spider-Man. Orca is not currently available on the client note. It was left out due to a bug. All right, looks like Surf's up on the other side of the table. Yeah, I, I think there's a, a good chance it could be 8K on the nose. I agree with that. Um, So we'll go... Carnage, Enchantress. Am I demoning? I'm not sure if I'm demoning. I think I'm demoning. Am I? If I'm good enough to snap. I guess they used their brood already. Yeah, maybe we're supposed to snap. I gotta go either way on that. If they go like if they go max surfer over here, it's plus 13 and they go to 15. Yeah, we, we actually lose to max surfer, right? Oh, sitting on the demon because Killmonger is possible is a real thing. Yeah. Oh, we could Professor X left and save the Enchantress for next turn. Yeah, just not play the Carnage. Yeah, maybe that was better. Well, no, I, I need to have priority, so I would play the Carnage. Yeah, maybe maybe you're right that that's better. I'm going to play Professor X left and Vibranium middle and hope that their plan is involves a Killmonger. We, we would have had priority. I could have Professor... No, I wouldn't have been able to Carnage with five. Yeah, yeah, good call. We, we lose to Max Surfer regardless of where they play it. I am Iron Man. What a weird game. They're up by nine, we're up by 11, so we win. Just both players limping in with weak hands. Chat, this is not a Republican safe space. Do not post conspiracy theories about the shuffler or the matchmaking algorithm. I promise you it's not out to get you. If you want if you want a place to spread baseless conspiracy theories about how the shuffler and the matchmaker algorithm are out to get you, go to Reddit or the Discord server.
Although, if you if you are someone who believes in baseless conspiracy theories, I have heard that the Republicans are looking for a qualified Speaker of the House. You should report to DC to offer your services. This is a concession chat. I think this might be a concession angle. Moist meat machine, thanks for the prime. They're snapping me. Definitely out. Peace. No, uh, no Professor X in chat either. Escaped. Chat, if you ever want a really depressing slash funny read, there is an entire thread that's like dozens or maybe even hundreds of pages long at this point on the Magic Arena forms. Do those maybe those don't exist anywhere. At one point, there was this giant support thread that was just a bunch of people copiuming each other, letting complaining about things being rigged against them, and how something had to be broken. So, when I taught college statistics classes, one of the exercises I had my students do in intro level stats every semester was I had everyone in the class write down a list of a dozen random numbers between one and 10. And without fail, every single semester, the numbers that were presented when people were asked to write things randomly basically never had clumps of numbers in them. When humans intuitively think about the concept of random, they don't think about true random. In the human lizard brain, random to most people means uniformly distributed in a random manner. You think you think of a, a list of things that like, the order is is random that you're kind of making it up, but the distribution of it is even across the numbers in the constraints that they were given typically. One of those one of those kind of interesting human phenomenon type things. Yes, and this this is the well and so clumps are random is the one thing people push against especially with shufflers in card games and it's actually kind of funny I didn't think about this until I'm saying it out loud right now, but the fact that Marvel Snap is singleton actually removes the phenomenon of clumps existing in their card game deck, right? Which is actually low key very smart when I say it out loud. That's like so many things the Snap team did yeah, except for rocks. Yes, with subterranea. Subterranea rocks are the one exception. And I, I hadn't thought about that before until just now. All right, so what if I Professor X here? They're going up to nine. I'm going up to 13. And then if they play their second Nova and kill it next turn, they're still only going to 12. So I'm winning middle. Yes, making your students flip coins is another way to to see the kind of phenomenon I'm talking about as well. Okay, and then similarly here, I think we just go Demon Professor X over here to protect this demon from a Killmonger and these as well, right? And they're just leaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Victory. Dan Maxarian and Side Burnsy, thank you for the primes. Appreciate that. Your Wednesday's going swell. Can we crack 90 this stream chat? Might be possible. I would tell I would tell my students to write down a dozen numbers randomly between one and ten. 
And then we would compare and show at the front of the class the number of selections from the room to show how there weren't any clumps or groupings in most of the ones people submitted. Are there any videos about the right time to grind rank? What do you think... I guess my, my question to you, my response to that would be a question back to you. Why do you think there's a particular right time to grind rank? So Polaris out of them is actually quite funny. Um, I'm going to Polaris and grab the goose here, hopefully, and then we'll be able to shang chi their monster that they were otherwise preventing. It's absolutely crazy how some people will sooner believe every game is rigged against them rather than admit they're just not good. I mean, admitting you're not good or need to improve requires a reflective element that a lot of people don't want to invest in any part of their lives, much less their hobby. It, in part, card games and variants by design games are popular because they're ego savers. If you're looking for a reason why you lost a game of Marvel Snap other than I need to improve and get better, you're always going to be able to find one. There's there's always a cop out if you look for it. All right, so we can't Cosmo the Bugle. Hmm. Don't have a Shang-Chi for monster yet. I think we're just punting the bugle. The question is, can I win without that? Can we can we win Nova Roma? That's gonna be the big the big question mark. We gotta need to draw Zabu next turn. So we can sneak into the goose. Uh, I can't sentry on the right lane. I play a lot of fighting games, and one of the main reasons why they're not popular is you can't blame anything else. Correct. Yep. Yeah, even like, so I played a lot of Pokemon, you know, I, I did some broadcasting for that game. M MOBAs and online team games had that same variance cop-out element, right? It's your, you're not the reason you lost the game. Your teammates are the reason you lost the game. If I do this... Uh, I'm still winning here, and then I have a demon to play in the middle. So this could work out. Hey, Padan Tech! Thank you for the brand new Prime. Great username. Is it possible to think the matchmaking algorithms prioritizes mirrors of decks and waiting and not think rashly that the game is out to get you? The only rational reason to think that is if you think Second Dinner is lying to you outright about how their game's matchmaking works. And I don't think there's... Second Dinner doesn't always make decisions that we like, but I don't believe they've ever lied to us outright, to my knowledge. Is 12 enough to win mid? They're clearly a Silver Surfer deck. We lose to... Oh, we have priority, so we lose to Killmonger. Well, poop. Yeah, I think we gotta go. Escaped. Why can't I Drax here? Unfortunately, I am cursed with literacy. That's something that I'm working on. Carnage is minus one. Oh yeah, Carnage is minus one. You're right. There's no reason to clear the up. Demon's the only card I could really play here. So the unranked Magic Arena queue had a this pairs you based on the estimated deck strength as well as their Brawl queue had that. But the ranked ladder in Magic Arena had neither of those things despite the multiple many pages long conspiracy theories claiming otherwise. The next strength algorithm in Arena also wasn't very good, is accurate. It tried to estimate deck strength based on your wild cards, which is not a good measure of deck strength at all in <laughs> the remote slightest. Oh, snap. Hey, glad you're having fun, Mr. Two. Hey, 
also have a zombie. I have an enchantress. I have an enchantress. Do I still play Pokemon Night? No, it's been a little bit. My wife and I have been watching a little bit more TV and playing some other video games. PlayStation, PlayStation 5s have finally been a little bit more accessible, so we got one for the upstairs living room, so we've been playing some games together. We just did a playthrough of Detroit Become Human. You know what's great about this chat? Enchantress was second, so I also get to absorbing me an Enchantress, this Wong. I guess, is it worth, is it worth losing, is it worth losing my Zabu to get rid of their Wong? It probably is, right? It probably is. Is my chat always like this? Probably. Yeah, we have priorities, so I think the answer is yes. We should play It Takes Two. Yeah, that's on our list. Look at that, chat! We knew Wong was dying anyways! My brain is fucking huge! Huge! You wish your brain was as big as mine, chat. We knew the Zabu was going down. And we don't have any four drops left either. Looky here. Looky here. The Guardian of the Galaxy buffs are Absorbing Man nerfs. That's true, actually. Yeah, the Drax change makes Absorbing Man Drax worse, which is something we do with some frequency. It probably makes Drax better overall, but it is it is worth noting that it's not a strict upgrade. Perhaps. We could lose this. I felt satisfied with our play, but... That's how I feel every time I play leader. My brain is huge. The card's accomplishing its purpose, then. Can they beat 11 while also beating us in the middle? Probably. Okay, that going left is ideal. Ah, good game, but it close. Never played the Mount and Blade series. I am not. From the Zabu Darkhawk video, honestly, would me or any other streamer bitches about snipers, it's likely just us being salty. <laughs> I know myself, 3 ham. Thanks for the thanks for the support. I think we snap Viper, kick a squirrel into Zabu here, huh? Quarry is on our list. I have, I actually haven't played the quarry yet, but um, uh, what's the one that precedes the quarry? Um, the one with the the Yetis or the what's it called? We pl I played that one on stream a while back. I want to do that one with her. Until dark, yes. Until dawn. Until dawn, yes. The Wendigos. I liked. I liked until dawn. We're definitely, definitely gonna play that one together at some point. Yeah, everything is coming up, Millhouse. Can I press the snap button again? Chat, why doesn't the why doesn't the button work, chat? 
Why doesn't the button work? Is it broken? Chat, chat, my game's bugged. I think we, uh, am I a coward? A little bit, a little bit of a coward. I'm gonna Professor X the right though, huh? No, actually it's probably better to Spider-Man. Yeah, cause then I can play other stuff. Friendly neighborhood Spider -Man here. Okay, good chat, good chat. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. This cube isn't very good at getting, this deck is just cube. This deck isn't very good at getting a lot of cubes, but man, we've been, we've been getting a lot of, a lot of dubs this afternoon. A little bit more run goods to 90 chip. Yeah, the quarry is like a spiritual successor successor for Until Dawn. Or do deck building tutorials or grinding level advice streams. Uh, I don't know what you mean specifically by grinding level advice. I mean, we're kind of we're kind of ranking up right now. The first week or two of the season is basically me giving grinding level advice. Cuz I snap and retreat more aggressively. If you're ever a higher win rate deck or a higher cube rate deck. I mean, if your goal is climbing, higher cube rate is better. The, the actual answer chat is I play decks that I enjoy playing. So like, you'll never see me play Death Wave and I don't play Leech Leader because I just don't find the play patterns of either of those decks particularly fun. And that's not to, uh, you know, shout down or degrade anybody that enjoys those decks. They're just not my cup of tea. Is it crazy to Viperhood Demon rather than Zabu here? God, that feels crazy. Call me maybe. They could be Cerebro. Yeah, I guess that's true. Wind aid my hand. the middle. They're looking more and more like Cerebro too, but we do have Enchantress here, which is nice. Traded Zabu for a rock. We did trade Zabu for a rock. It was not a fair trade. a win rate deck different than a cube rate deck? That's a good question. So uh, in Marvel Snap, some decks are better than others when it comes to winning more cubes more consistently. And that's because they're better at creating unpredictable swings at the end of the game. They could be baiting Enchantress with this Wong. I don't know. Zabu, okay. There's some kind of weird Cerebro 2 deck, I think, Chad. Are we dead? I can't tell if we're dead.
It could have been right to Spider right rather than Enchantress. I can't like they're playing a brew, right? I like I have no idea what the output range of their deck is right now. Yeah, we're we're trading a cube or three for knowledge here. Yeah, are they are they a surfer deck? Is a good could be a good one. They go like three drop, like Killmonger Surfer gets us. Surfer, Surfer seems like a good bet. Maybe there's some kind of weird hybrid Surfer Cerebro deck. Okay, they didn't play two three drops. I mean, who the fuck had Rock Slide Shuri as the final play here? Right? Like. <laughs> I, I guess this is just a generically good card and this is these are both dark clock the storm is what really threw me for a loop most most hawk decks don't have room for a storm it feels like yeah yeah and if we knew this is what they were doing that I should have spider man the Baxter building in fact, I, I, the, the Enchantress here might have been suspect. If I knew what this was going in, we would Spider-Man this on five for sure instead of prioritizing the Enchantress. Shuri is also strange in a Dark Hawk deck because Shuri does not double ongoing bonuses. Is accurate. Is Miles and Izabu deck discounted to zero or is it always a one minimum? So fun fact about Miles, Miles is actually just always one always when it gets reduced. And Zabu also says it can't reduce lower than one. So it's, it's always one for two different reasons. The Morbius getting to live in nowhere is unfortunate for us. You can't Enchantress it. Looking like a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man game. I think that's bad for us, question mark. Not actually sure. Lost the one in four. Okay, Professor X is a great draw. And then I get to tee up Spider-Man afterwards. Hopefully they don't play mid and we get to Professor X there. They did lose Hella to Gambit, that's true. Cheer for uh, extra tiebreakers later. Uh, the order doesn't matter because next turn's the last turn. 
Switch to solving issues today. Not that I'm aware of. Absorbing Man is really not replaceable. It's very important. Sentry, you could probably swap out for something like Rescue or Crossbones, but... Absorbing, absorbing Man is pretty important. If you if you're someone interested in playing Zabu, Spider Man, and Absorbing Man should be top top priority pickups for your collection. They're the two cards that really kind of put them put him into overdrive. Friendly neighborhood Spider Man here. Man. They have four cards in their hand. So they're one in, one in three. We stay for two cubes for a two thirds win, right? This is, this is nowhere chat. They, they can't discard anything. Otherwise, if this was a nowhere, we'd have enchantress them and won the left. I already snapped yet. I snapped on turn one or two. Their apocalypse is at 12, so it's beating us if they hit it. Sentry doesn't win the right. Uh, it's for breaker, technically. Maybe it's better to just put a four into here, though. We're losing, we're losing them discarding apocalypse either way. is carnage here for eating hood and centuries thing am i playing for the raft why is it so expensive to buy optional cosmetics that don't impact the actual gameplay probably because they're optional and they're whale hunting with them I think Eternity Range is a great location. It has some strategy and things to think about, but isn't a huge impact on the game itself. It'll be a great, great new addition to the game. I think I'm gonna play for the Raft. We'll see if we get punished for this though. The decision for playing for the Raft versus not here is basically, do I lead Viper or do I lead Daredevil? Is the, is the decision-making process Im immediately punished? Uh, I think Carnage is actually our best possible draw here, right? Because it lets me build this, but then it also doesn't fully commit me to uh, to being here. I lose the Daredevil equity for the Professor X, but I think that's worthwhile. How do you get Zabu without cashing it? Zabu will be added to Series 5 down the line, and then eventually 4 and then 3. But for the time being, it is only available if you spend money. Spider-Man the right, and I'm gonna snap them. We have a free eight power thing and a Shang-Chi here. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Lost this coin flip, unfortunately, but this is probably game winning. It beats the Taskmaster at least. Do I have a free to play account? I do not. They're just banking on me not being able to win the right.
Or maybe they thought I had to like put everything into there. They probably definitely feel like they should have put Mary here and like the zero here. They probably still lose the right. It's minus seven. So we would have won regardless. Honestly, the fact that the Spider-Man played into the Red Skull path probably convinced them to stay in and give us two extra cubes there. I have literally never played a free-to-play game where the community around that game didn't say the cosmetics were too expensive and that the company would make more money if they charged less for those cosmetics. Chat, I promise you Second Dinner isn't running a charity and they've priced their cosmetics in a way that they think is the most profitable. I think it's fine and completely reasonable to be like, I'm disappointed that I can't get the cosmetics because I can't spend money like that on this game. And it's fine to be like sad that they're expensive, but the idea that like they've priced them in a way that's not profitable or is less profitable is very silly and outside reality. Hopefully they viper me and then this carnage is sick. Wait, actually, am I supposed to... Huh? I wonder if I'm supposed to Carnage here. If I... I think Killmonger has a place in this list. No. Need your four drops. I think I'm supposed to do this, but it makes my sentry a little bit worse. It's fine, let's just top deck Viper like a champion. this current list that we're playing is anywhere near optimal, but I will say that it definitely feels pretty good to play Daredevil with Zabu in general. Spider-Man's always been good with Daredevil, just like less good than the other options previously, and Zabu changes that dynamic. I know that I can stay through the Snapchat. Our hand's kinda not great. I don't have a Professor X for next turn. I have Spider-Man, I guess. Let's go fish. That's a great pull. So the real Mysterio is on the right, obviously. And then we probably go Spider-Man Demon in the middle. And then our six is Sentry into Viper here. The variants in the battle pass are exclusive to the battle pass is what's been communicated. Once you once you miss them, you have missed out. If they don't kill Monger this turn, playing the demon middle is a little suspect, I guess. Arrow. That probably beats us, right? Because they have priorities, so I can't spite, I can't web anything. Yeah, we're, I think we're done. Escape. 
Bum, bum. Bum, 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 bum. Can Arrow fit into this deck? I think Arrow tends to not be good with Daredevil. Daredevil. Daredevil's information isn't really necessary to play Arrow. I will say this Zabu deck is probably the least I snap every time I have Zabu deck I've played. Like to draw Carnage next turn. I bet on them playing left tier. Could also be right to send through the negative zone though, so that way I can get uh they did nothing. Awkward. It's a uh... Feels like a She-Hulk angle. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. So we're banking on drawing Carnage here. Hey, thanks for the 46 months, Jay. Does Enchantress win here some amount of the time? Maybe. Uh, it feels like I'm, I'm I'm a fish. Yeah. They're supposed to leave. Poster retreat there, Chip. Uh, I think I'm gonna chill on viewer submitted decks until I'm infinite, 24 hour prints. I think, I think I would like to climb to infinite playing all decks that I like playing so I can post a video about um, my stats from 70 to infinite for this season. I think would be a fun thing to share and talk about as an example. Well, I've, I've always played viewer decks before I got to infinite in previous seasons, Bootman. You like there's a lack of top end power for this deck? No. How do you track track your stats? There's a community tool called uh, Snap.Fan. Um, a snap fan require you to be on PC. It requires you to be on PC or have a real mobile device, an Android. When do I think I'll get in bed? Probably sometime in the next three or four days. Another, another few sessions. In 
Interesting. Shame I don't have a Spider-Man. No, Professor X is locked out of the big house. I don't have a good way to keep up with Thor here. Is there any chance that 12 wins the left with the big house? Oh, it's more to play Enchantress actually, right? This is more? It's 14. Oh God. Everybody clinch! Everybody clinch! Just barely. subs it's about that time stand up stretch your legs walk around take a drink of water i'll see you in 60 seconds Six cards, completing pull three, and definitely spending money on the game. Is it worth pinning Absorbing Man, buying Absorbing Man with tokens? Yeah, definitely. I think if you're interested in playing Zabu decks, Absorbing Man's a great pickup. For sure, for sure. Oh, I could have one more power with Absorbing Man over Carnage. Good shout, because I'm bad at counting. There's a question from a non-sub. I wanted to wait for the ad to finish before I answered. They said, Jeff, what do you think of using the Viper and Goblin or the push stuff over something package in the disruption? I think it's great. I just don't highlight that package nearly as often because it requires some pretty specific series three cards. So like Viper, Black Widow, Green Goblin. I think those are great cards to play with. If you look at, there is a Titania Daredevil deck highlight up on my YouTube channel. It utilizes the send stuff to the other side of the board sub package and a mid-range disruption type shell like this. I think it's quite good. I have a link to that video. Not offhand. If you look on the front page of my YouTube channel, there's a playlist titled Deck Highlights. So you can check it out there. That was the Viper I wanted for next turn, shit. Sedge. 
At least they didn't have a meaningful play this turn. Shiolk isn't very good in the Moon Miles deck because the Moon Miles deck wants to be able to play cards on turn five, and Shiolk says you don't do that. There's a different double up Shiolk Moon Girl deck that I've played with in the past, though. A few of the details are different, though. So I'm going to ask how long my plan is to stream for today. I don't quite know yet. We're hanging, we're hanging out around 4,000 people, and if that continues to be the case, at least another hour. Damn it, Luke. I've had enough of your bar. I really need to draw Zabu this turn, chat, so we can go Sentry and Viper on four. Because if I have to Sentry on four and not Viper till five, the Avengers compound throws that off. Okay, well. Now. Um. Now do I even play Zabu? <laughs> Le Pog. Le Pog. I'm surprised they left. They have Hood. I thought they'd stay because they have Hood into the bar with their name. Weird. Sedge. Someone in chat said 24 hour stream pog champ. Chat, my 32nd birthday is this weekend. I am far too old to do 24 hour streams. We're gonna snap the Zabu into Century Viper here. Even if Dream Dimension's a little annoying for Professor X. If we if we keep floating like north of 3,500 people, I think I'm gonna stream till about seven o'clock. Let me double check my calendar, but I don't think the boss had anything scheduled tonight. Nothing, nothing to do tonight. Tomorrow I need to be done by like 5.30 or 6 it looks like, but tonight's pretty open. Damn it, Bobby, I look away for two seconds and my thing disappears. I don't believe Professor X works into the bar. That's true. My, my viewer count usually tapers off in like the 4.30 to 6 o'clock range, so we'll see. Drops, it drops off as people leave work. There isn't a deck highlights playlist on YouTube channel for me. I promise you it's literally the top thing on the page. All right, I've lost the right, they've lost the left. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Baby and Cray Cray, thanks for the prime. You ever done estimates on how much productivity you cost the American economy? You know, funny story. When I worked in corporate America, one of the roles I had there in data analysis involved me knowing people's salary. And one of the things I used to do when I was stuck in a boring meeting was calculate the hourly rate the company was paying for whatever bullshit document or discussion we were having. But it was just like, good God, just so, so much waste. It's like, yep, this is a, this is a $40,000 piece of paper right here. Glad we discussed what the header text should look like. Hey, thanks for the prime, the XP share, appreciate it. 
Should I Carnage left? Oh yeah, Carnage left is technically one more here, right? That's a good shout. I missed it while we were chatting. Is it all Spideys? Um, most Zabu decks I think want Spider-Man is an accurate statement to say. But there's also plenty of non-Spider-Man decks in the format. Or non-Zabu decks in the format, I guess we should say. Woo! Got him by a little bit. Are they like Zabu Surfer? It looks like they're Zabu Surfer. Victory. Just gotta not spew for a little bit more here, Chad. I can taste 90. It's close. It's close. Yeah, that's a good way to do it, Oni. And honestly, like, having the stream on for noise, it's no different than, like, having the radio playing, right? I think that's a very complicated and convoluted question that doesn't have a clean answer, Marco. A little, a little bit of the nuance take is... Things like the Progressive Caucus inside of the Democrats are a good way to create change within the two-party system to work towards a better future that I would like to see. But again, there's just a lot, there's a lot to it. And remember, if you're someone that wants to chat about politics and all sorts of things like that, my subs discord has channels for that that I'm active in and off stream hours too, as well as other members of the community. We're not a particularly good World ship deck champ. Hood would be a great draw here, so we can go Hood and Carnage. That might actually be. Oh, I guess that's not good to stuff. I was say if we go Sentry into this, we might be able to get him. But never lucky rubber ducky. We lost. We lost the priority coin flip, champ. We lost the priority coin flip. Hey, Chartney, Happy New Year to you too. Thanks for the two months. Oh, I had Absorbing Man! Oh, my, why is my brain so bad? We probably still end up losing, but I totally could have eaten the Goblin. Yeah, 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 he'd have been seven, right? He'd have been seven. Do I recommend a deck for climbing? I think all of the decks that were good last season for climbing are still good now. Never forget, chat, the best thing for ranking up with isn't just the best deck. The deck that you understand how to retreat and snap with has a lot of value. And there's some new relearning with Zabu decks entering the metagame, but a lot of the matchups are still very similar. People, people often ask me, they're like, Jeff, why don't you do meta updates every week? And the, the blunt answer is like, the Marvel Snap metagame just doesn't change every week. Like there's like some little things and like Leech Leader pushed it in like a little bit of a direction, but like by and large, the stuff that was good previously is still good. Zabu. Yes, yeah, the diversity is a good thing, is accurate. All right, shit. We've been practicing these coin flips, Viper. I'm counting on you. There's a good lass. There's a good lass, Chet. Do, 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 do. And we have priority here, which means if I Professor X, we lock the Doom Bot out of wherever it's going. Now, where would I like to lock it out of is the question. Do I want to win the sewer system or win the scar? Oh, wait. If I do this, they're making two Doom Bots. So that locks them to 10 power over here. So we win. Yeah, okay. Victory. 
Yeah, yeah, because they filled because they filled the scar. It took me a second to remember Karma Touch was happening. This hand is bad, but it's also not super strong. Could go, could go either way here. Sunspot's pretty good into Lamentus. Pretty glad that I'm not committed to this location. We can maybe just avoid that one. See how it goes. <laughs> we're we're actually just dead to infinite. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. So what's your take on stamping on the Daredevil effect? That's a really good question. So the answer is essentially if you think your opponent's gonna leave on turn six after your daredevil effect flips up anyways, you should snap on the daredevil effect. But also you should probably work to think on turns three and four if you're gonna have a good daredevil. If yes, then snap earlier. Escaped. And stamping on Daredevil be a decent bluff. I think bluffing is basically always negative EV in Marvel Snap. I think the stakes are too low and people like to chase a rabbit too much for snapping to be a great idea. That being said, I have Viper the Ninja and I have Daredevil Professor X, so like this is a snap. Uh, some bots do retreat, yes. We left there because we couldn't beat Infinite, right? In the Lamentus game. So, this is a sentiment I hear parroted a lot in the Marvel Snap community, and it's one that I think people don't think critically enough about. And that sentiment is, if you are 50-50 to win a game of Marvel Snap, then you should always stay in for the cube calls. The thing that you are 50-50 to win a game of Marvel Snap doesn't account for is the fact that you frequently are going to miss something your opponent could have that beats you more often than 50% of the time. Just think back to your own games and think about how often you think through you what, what you think are all your opponent's possible plays and you go, okay, we're a coin flip, I'm gonna stay. And then they play something that beats you 100% of the time. That happens fairly often, right? Because there's just a ton of cards and it's hard to know exactly what they could have. So my general rule of thumb is if I sit down in a game and I think I'm 50-50 to win, I assume I'm worse than that. If I count out almost everything, and I'm like, yeah, this is a coin flip, I'm probably fucking worse than a coin flip. And there could be, you know, some instances where that's not strictly the case, but I think on average, that's true more often than it's not true. I really like to draw Carnage here to go with Sentry. Booterman. Part of me wants to do nothing this turn. 
Spiel's crazy. They could we could get Enchantress. If we get Enchantress, I'm really sad about doing nothing. So it's probably not the line. Oh, we could have Spider-Man the Vault. That's a good, that's a good take. Spider-Man the Vault is a good take. Now, I'm gonna do this. And this tees us up to Shang-Chi here next turn. This might be over committing left. They might, they might be giving up the left with the hood there. Is Surfer in Series 5 now or after the current season? Um, I assume it will get added to Series 5 with the upcoming patch. Okay, so they could have Shang-Chi, but they could also have Garnage here. This is my strongest Zabu deck. This is the Zabu deck I've enjoyed playing the most. However, I would bet this Zabu deck has a worse cube rate than the Zabu Darkhawk deck we played a bit of. Just have a reasonable shot to win all three here. I assume they're leaving. If they got Carnage, they might not be leaving. There's a 50% chance they know they're dead. We're good, right? Shang Chi still gets it. Good chat. Good chat. Good chat. Whew. What makes this deck more fun than the Dark Hawk deck for me? This deck's very is more interactive. Victory. Played your stock negative list today. A lot of fun. Plus ten ranks. Hey, nice, Mr. Monster Taco. Eighty-nine. Oh, we should Enchantress and then Shang so we kill the Lizard. Yes. Yes. Good shout. Good shout. It didn't matter there, but you are correct that that is the correct way to have done that. If you're missing Sentry in this deck, I would play White Queens or Crossbow or possibly Test Rescue. Zola Panther is solid. Yeah, I I just unlocked Shuri. I want to try Shuri Zola Panther at some point, but we hit this deck, and it's the kind of deck I really enjoy playing, so he's kind of been chilling with it. That was not the cat I wanted for Christmas, Chip. It's not the kitty I wanted for Christmas. I think the stock negative list is the most consistent. Yes. Or snapping, bless you, and most good. Something like that. Hey, Fitz, thanks for the prime. Appreciate it. I'm allergic to the TVH yet. There's a pretty kitty. Sand snappable. <clears throat> yeah, I think so with the Ketra. Man, I've n I've never wanted to draw a. I've never wanted to draw. A uh, century so badly in my life as to viper it into an invisible woman path. Uh, could be Patriot. Uh, I've been playing invisible woman in Cerebra 2 this season too. Hey, thanks for the bits as well, Fitz. If you want to get more involved in the community, you should make sure to pop into the Discord server as well. Very active group of folks there. Extra building live. That's nice. This Twitch stream chat pre-recorded in front of a live audience. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Really glad we snapped. Oh. 
What are the odds this doesn't this doesn't work? I I guess actually there's no reason to do that, right? I should just do this. This is just better. Your bot is sassy. We try. It emulates me. It's not its fault. It's just, it's, you know. Spider, spider man. Bum, ba da dum, ba da do do. <laughs> All right, Chick, can we get these last nine cubes before the end of the day? Is Lockjaw worth an early pull three buy? Um, I think Lockjaw is a ton of fun. If you like the play patterns of it, it's all right. You really need at least one of the zero cost Wasp or Yellow Jacket to unlock some of the potential there. And then the Thors are other big upgrades. Gene, Gene, and regular Thor. If you want to get an idea for what some Lockjaw decks look like when you're early, early series three, I have a Lockjaw Ultimate Deck Guide up on my YouTube channel that breaks down an early Series 3 build as well as the full power builds later on. Victory. Am I going to do patch note thoughts on stream? Uh, no, nah, I think I'm going to take a take a beat. We ran out of... No, there were no turns that came. I think I'm going to take a beat and grab something to eat and see the family. And then I'll probably record that after. This is a hood right, and this is honestly sad. This is a hood right angle into Zabu, into Century Carnage over here. No, so what do you think of the Lockjaw discard deck? I think the Lockjaw discard deck is a phenomenal example of a bad cube rate deck. What I mean by that is it is a deck that plays very face up on the table when its hand is strong. So your opponent knows when they should be leaving and they're likely beat. Upspeak is the clinical term for my speech pattern. <clears throat> and many, many people confuse my Twitch stream with an airport. So when they decide to announce their displeasure before they leave with my speech pattern, they post it in chat. I think that discarded card should be hidden from your opponent. No, not at all. In fact, I would, I would wager, um, discarded cards being hidden has to do with um the software limitation more than an explicit choice friendly neighborhood spider-man here It was a little sad that I didn't think we were going to get to matter that we webbed this year, but we get to, uh, oh, this complicates things. So they could move Bishop mid now. If they move Bishop mid, well, they, they can only play two things here, right? And if they play two things, the Bishop, oh, if they play two things, the Bishop goes to eight, which means it also gets another bonus then, right? It'll go to 11 if they play two things. So they'll get plus five here, putting them to 16. So I need to, I need to do this, right? Yeah, the, the Bishop will share Monster Metropolis with Carnage if it goes to eight. Then I'm adding six here, going to 16. 
They could also move Bishop to the middle with this line and then play more than 10 power over here to beat us. But I don't, I don't think I have a, a, way, a way to beat that. Put it left, okay. Victory. Cube by glorious cube. How can they move Bishop? The space stone the previous turn lets them move something from that location. Hmm. If I had a Carnage or a Viper teed up, I would greed and just hood the Sinister London right off the bat, but without uh, a way to clear the hood guaranteed, I'm gonna be a little conservative and play it on the right. So the Shang-Chi didn't kill the Bishop there, Wraith. It just gave me enough power to win the path, even if they gained five there. Bro tweeted about the links, the leaks. I love sources, chat. Give me sources. This is nice. I don't really use Twitter anymore, so when I when I start typing Twitter into my browser, it just uh, puts up, puts in Brood's thing automatically. So what if I put Daredevil here and then I do this to guarantee here and here and then we have uh, an Absorbing Man here and here next turn. Yeah, I think so. They have, they have in fact played a lot of Thanos. Oh, are we about to get killmonger killmonger here is actually kind of good for us right because we're going to fully lock them in london and machine world for the next two turns oh wait they killed our ones on the right side though okay that that makes it messier oh no order Oh no! Oh no, order. Wait, depending on what they do, I could just Professor X and win, right? Depending on what they do here. Yeah, I messed up. This is sad. If I... If I would have played these in the right order, Absorbium would be here and here, and they'd be one... Oh, they would have... We're gonna... No, we would have beaten the Cosmo, right? They would have had seven here in the middle, and then we would have totally beaten them the following turn. God, I lost two cubes to the fucking Twitter. Escaped. Even... We're almost 100% to win that game without it. There's some discussion about a card nerf leak where leader gets minus one power reduction. There might be some context missing that I wanted to clear up. Here's the note that was intended to accompany that change. Leader's effect is proving to be very frustrating to many players and polarizing away in its ability to lock down games and discourage playing other six cost cards. We're taking a bit away of power from it now and exploring further changes in the future. <clears throat> That last sentence is not intended to mean we may or may not change them again. It's intended to mean we are determining exactly which change to make. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, the, they're just taking a power off. It definitely feels like a, we're getting back from vacation energy, and we understand that this has been problematic, and we want to do something now. Strongest? No. I think the Moon Girl Miles deck is a ton of fun, but the strongest decks in the game are probably the Leech Leader stuff. Or the the leader arrow dino decks. If you're if you're someone that's looking to just play the best deck in Marvel Snap right now, I'd recommend going to KM Best Stream or Dara Stream and asking them what um what uh arrow leader deck you should be playing. How do you define strongest? Winning is for most average cubes. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Uh, Dara and KM have other initials or jargons after their usernames. If anybody in chat knows their stream links, feel free. Feel free to post their stream links in chat. Links are enabled. I don't know what they are offhand. They both, they both hang out here on occasion. I just don't, uh, don't have their URLs memorized. What else is worth noting is that Ben Breed post, ben, ben Breed, Ben Brode post confirms uh, the leaks as authentic and correct, right? I don't know that I could snap here. Our hand is like not super, our hand is kind of clunky and it feels like we could lose this still. Yeah, right? Like, snapping here seems not great. Easy retreat. Escaped. Your first starting card, so you spend gold on credits to boost cards. Yes. Boosting, boosting your cards is the way you progress up the collection track. The only thing you absolutely should avoid doing that is a spew is don't use the fast upgrade feature in the shop. Uh, Zabu Shang-Chi Monster Isle flipped up. I think we snap. to play hood to the right whenever you're playing this deck you want to hedge hood to the right because that way when we have carnage especially because that way if sentry shows up carnage can clear hood and the minus thing why shouldn't she use the fast upgrade because the fast upgrade feature essentially trades um it trades credits for extra um it trades credits for extra boosters, and you can always get more boosters. You can't always get more credits. You get more boosters just by playing. Credits. Credits are an unlimited resource. Does Viper fill their bar? She sure does. What if I do this, actually? This is kind of fun. Harold, thank you for the brand new tier one sub. Appreciate the support.
Yeah, I mean, the Nightcrawler's there, but this still, like, fills their thing twice, right? Puts two things over here. I did. We just talked about them, Fugman. Or, sorry, this actually puts uh, three things over, right? I love this hood split. Yeah, it's great. My number one piece of advice for new snap players is learn to accept that you're going to lose a bunch while you learn how to play Marvel Snap. It is inevitable. All right, so we need to draw Enchantress here. Sentry. Uh, Sentry works, right? We go Daredevil, flip up, fill here. Shang-Chi, kill your thing in the middle. Sentry here. We get in trouble with an arrow here. that beat us? No, we're winning. We're winning the right, right? I think we win the middle too. Do we? Okay, yeah, cool. We lose, we lose the left, but we filled the right. Victory. I think Spider-Man is an excellent pickup with the addition of Zabu to the game. All right, chat. I've been live for almost nine hours and I'm feeling myself start to start to play a little bit less and lose focus a while. Um, <laughs> welcome to the live one, said well. Uh, for folks that are new, I really appreciate everybody that tapped that follow button today. My little Twitch tracker here said we had over 400 people that did that, which is awesome. If you're new to my stuff, I'm here Monday through Friday. I start about 9 a.m. Central and I go till about 5 or 6 p.m. Central. It's currently 5.30 p.m. Central. So I'll be back again tomorrow morning doing it all again as well as Friday. If you're looking for more content from myself, my Snap YouTube channel has a ton of great stuff on it. I play an incredible amount of decks here on stream and every single day, seven days a week, a deck highlight gets posted up here with some of the best games from the best of them. Another thing to note, people that prefer live stream style, more organic content. I also have this second YouTube channel, Jeff Hoagland, where all my full stream archives get posted. You can see these are a lot less popular. But if you're looking to get full streams after the fact, wins, losses, everything, this is a good place to do that as well as some random variety and other stuff that I'm doing. See, we're talking about Dara and KM, and KM is live. I'm gonna send you over his way, Chip. Have a good, have a good rest of your evening. If you're looking for my thoughts on the leaked balance changes, it's gonna publish on my YouTube channel in the next two hours. I'm gonna eat some dinner and head that way, and then and then put that together. Peace, folks.